Okay, so this is now session... Crap, I do this every time. I think it's 46. 46. Yeah, so it's been about a month since... Uh, I think it's been about a month for most of us since we played. You guys are still just outside of Gukumar, but uh, you're upside the uh, the top of the cliff, just the north side of it. And uh, Warwick has led you guys, uh, technically, I guess Beekwim did. He met you guys in the, the cavern down below. And uh, Beekwim has led you guys up through his basement uh, into his home. And uh, basically told you guys that you basically have one night to stay there before he wants your asses out of there. He's been somewhat abrasive, which Warwick, I guess, kind of told you guys he was like that. But uh, Warwick uh, tried to talk you guys into believing that he has a good heart. He's just kind of a hard ass, so to speak. So Beacon took you into your home. Uh, last session, you guys, uh, I think half of you were staying down in the basement to kind of maybe try to see if he can teach you something with his, uh, his neat, neat little lab he's got down there. I think that was Usul, and I think somebody else was also going to try to glean something off of that. Was that Sylvia Usul, or was it somebody else? It was me, and I believe there was somebody, but I, I'm not sure if they were uh, waiting for us to finish or actually watching along. Okay. Well, if it wasn't anybody here, I'm assuming that was Sylvia, and I'll, I'll kind of work with her offline since um, she wasn't here tonight. So you did that. The rest of you guys went upstairs, I think, uh, where I was showing you. Basically, you're, where you get to sleep for the night, somewhere, find a nice warm spot on the wooden floor somewhere, because that's about it. Uh, actually, let me switch over to the map for you guys, so you can actually see your awesome sleeping arrangements for tonight. If I switch over here. And let me do a shift click. This is the uh, the basement area where I just shift clicked it. No, it's the, oh, sorry, it's the upper area. And the, the basement area, let me zoom out a little more. Where was the basement area? Oh, yeah. Basement area is over here. Oh, I stayed downstairs. Okay, so, <laughs> right. There we go. Just answered our question for you. See, I was Abe Forth, and Usul stayed downstairs to try to glean something off of uh, Beekwim. Uh, as I recall, I think you guys yeah, successfully yeah, did some kind of a persuasion or something on him to uh, uh, basically allow him to try to teach you how to make some of the stuff that he normally makes down here. Uh, quite elaborate little uh, herbalism kit lab here. Um, you guys would have recalled that back over in the uh, room back here behind where this, his giant pet uh, polar bear is kind of keeping guard. Uh, there was a, a room he went back into and came back out with, I can't remember if it was it ingredients or was it potions. Guy, I think it was potions out of this room. And brought him back out here and kind of shared with you guys what uh, he could or, or couldn't make for you guys. Okay. Anything else that I missed, guys? Mm. Okay. Um, I also believe, like I shared with you last time, that um, Indon is still suffering from some kind of internal injury. Um, up to this point, Sylvia has been kind of uh, uh, hoisting him around in, his, in her magic broom and a tent so he doesn't have to walk. Uh, but you guys have seen him try to exert himself uh, a few times before where he just doesn't seem like he can quite uh, do anything really physical in nature without kind of uh, writhing in pain. See anybody else suffering from anything? I don't think they are. Uh, Didemeyer's here in spirit until he shows up. And uh, Warak shared with you guys that he was going to eventually travel back down to Gukumar to uh, finish what he promised the dwarves to uh, help them rebuild Gukumar at this point. Um, trying to remember if you last time you were there, did you guys share with Bequem the gnome about uh, what your intentions were and where you were headed? Anyone remember that? Uh, sure. Wait, you do remember that? Us talking about I don't, that? I don't remember, but I just think, wouldn't, wouldn't we? Because we're trying to go. <laughs> yeah, you guys are still on your, your, I guess, your ultimate task of getting to the Immortal, ca immortal Caverns. That's where Indon was leading you guys to uh, get your uh, to get the Immortal Ice, the part you need to make the Gem Core Extractor so that you can travel to the Plane of Limbo and get the gem that's needed for the... Uh, uh, the talisman in order to seal and or uh, destroy the portals that the slot are using to uh, uh, basically transport themselves onto the material plane. Um, leading to my notes. 
Yeah, Beacom, he, he, you guys did talk to him about the caverns. He, show, he said he didn't know the location of the caverns, but he did share some stories with you guys about how supposedly the dead roamed in the area nearby. Um, he also shared with Didamar that he heard about a man matching Hatterai's. That's the guy that Didamar was looking for when he ran into you guys. Um, man matching Hatterai's description that was asking questions of uh, some of the ice uh, fishermen in the area. Um, he didn't know of any of the fishermen that disappeared, but said that was common for this time of the year that the guys kind of show up and then uh, decide they can't hack it and they leave. So you're not really sure if they're disappeared, like gone missing, like maybe dead under the ice, or they just went back home. Uh, yeah, Warwick convinced Beacom to offer up some of his potions to the party. Beacom sold some uh, potions to everybody. You guys should have marked that down on your list already. I got marked here with one healing potion to Endon, Corn, Baron, and Didamar for 75 gold pieces each. He also sold one exhaustion recovery potion to Didamar and two to Sylvia for 200 gold pieces each. He still has two greater healing potions, two standard healing potions, and three exhaustion recovery potions left over that no one uh, wanted to buy, evidently. Oh. Buy some more of his healing potions if he is willing to sell them. Yeah, I'd buy another healing potion. Yeah, the greater ones were 200 each. The standard ones were 75. Yes. And I'll buy one greater and uh, one more healing. Okay, go ahead and mark that down your character sheet if you want. That'll be 275 mm -hmm. gold pieces. And the recovery potions... Yeah, those were also 200 gold pieces each. Had you already, had you already taken the 75 off my gold pool? I did not take uh, gold off anybody's. Yeah, I figured you didn't know. Five, 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 and then minus 200. Okay. Oh, I also got a... Didamar's not here, but I also see in my notes that Didamar contemplated to... Contemplated, contemplated his decision to leave his horse with the doors back down in Gukumar, and he said he may want to head back down and free his trusty steed <laughs> rather than risk the doors turning it into a uh, stew. And uh, Warwick said he would escort him down whenever he was ready to go. So if Didamar is going to be late, then uh, unless you guys object, I'm going to assume that those two are going to go do that while you guys are doing whatever else is going on here. A4's okay with it, because he doesn't like him. <laughs> doesn't like Warak or Didamar, or either? Uh, Didamar, I believe. Is that the new guy, the guy that came after Dirk disappeared, or died? Or Correct, eaten? correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah A4 doesn't like him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I think that's pretty much got you guys up to speed. Uh, you guys that weren't here last time, is there any other questions you got about what's happened in the past few sessions? Did anybody die? Uh, Dirk. Well, well maybe. I, no, I, I know about Dirk. <laughs> Most likely he Kinda. died because it's sad. Right, we'll take a long rest, right? Well, that's up to you guys. You guys haven't decided. I think it was like 8 o'clock in the morning by the time you guys uh, uh, got to Beacom's little uh, abode here. At dawn, we sleep. <laughs> I have no spells left. I really need a long rest. All right, so let's let's first start off with the the guys that are up on the uh, the upper floor here. What are you guys on the upper floor going to do here at this point? Sitting. <laughs> Who else up there? Just Baron and Quarren in this group. <laughs> yeah, we're just hanging out. All right, yeah. we're we're talking about Dirk going missing and shit. Yeah, Warwick Definitely would have told you guys to uh, basically stay in this room. If you go anywhere else, Beacon will get really pissed off. He'll tell you that back in the, this room over here, it's like kind of like a storage slash kitchen area. Uh, back over here is where uh, he keeps his uh, pet donkey that he keeps. And uh, this is the front door uh, right over here. Okay, if there's nothing specific you guys want to do or role play here, I'll is, switch back down to the basement. Bookshelf? Yeah, that uh, Warwick will tell you that this is some of his books uh, that he keeps up here. He he tends to be quite chintzy with his books, and you know, he'll kind of warn all you guys to just 
uh, if you're going to look at them, just look at them quick. Just make sure you put them back where they were. He gets kind of uh, uh, a little pissy about the organization of his books up here. But uh, these are the ones that he at least trusted me with looking at when I was here. It's not like his uh, his library has. What are some of the titles of the books, like on the spines? Most of the uh, – uh, well, give me give me an investigation. I mean, you pulling a book out, you looking through it, or are you just kind of looking at the – the binders and all the books. How you? Yeah, I just this. want to look at the binders, basically. Oh, if you're looking at the binders, you don't see any anything written on any of the binders on any of these books. Oh, okay. And put my finger in the gap so I know where I had it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, so you're gonna pull one out? Open it. Look. What... Yeah. Okay. Just one. One at random. Okay. So as you start kind of paging through the uh, uh, the page of this this one particular book you pulled out here. You'll see it looks almost like a, a journal. you see a journal of like uh, uh, per, a person's name, general description, uh, where he's from, and it uh, looks like a, a list of items that were uh, sold and or traded uh, with this individual. Okay, okay. I put the book back. Where I kind of looks at you and just make sure that's the right spot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I put my hand there just to, just to make sure. You know, kind of as you as you put that book back, he'll look at it and says, "Most of that's just meaningless numbers and, and crap." I think that's where he keeps track of uh, who buys stuff and what they buy, and uh, he keeps track of what kind of deals he made with them. Uh, he's very meticulous about it, about his numbers and, and stuff. He he remembers uh, uh, quite a few people he deals with, and if someone screws him over, he he makes a, a big note of it in there. At least that's what I've seen. Okay. Well, um, I probably won't touch any more of his books because, you know, he seems like a grumpy guy. All right. And Warak will kind of go over rummaging this, uh, this one cabinet over here and pull out a, a few blankets that he knows about. In there. It's about uh, four blankets is all he can pull out of here. It says, uh, I guess you guys can try to figure out how to use these to make yourself a makeshift little better some of you wanting to rest for a while looks like somebody's cuddling <laughs> that's your call but i'm not gonna role play that <laughs> <laughs> we should have our own blankets we're probably all right so we're not gonna hand you off the blankets and he and did will start kind of talking about what they want to do and potentially when they want to go head back down to gukumar and see if they can Find the status of Didmar's horse and whether or not where I could come back or not. I'll him on the shoulder and uh, look up into his eyes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for the loss of your friend. Corn, you still there? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Well, you know, Dirk was uh, a little bit of a shifty guy, but he's uh, trusted him a lot because he was fighting beside me, and he never ran off like a coward, as I remember, so he was a good man. I hope he's still alive, but I really fear the worst at this point. Hard to lose the good ones, isn't it? Absolutely. I've seen too many good men die. Aye. Uh, too many friends. Did my yeah. Then I take out my bedroll, lay it down, get in bed. <laughs> Alright, Sylvia moved her uh, her flying broom in her tent, almost like it's stuck up against the wall right here where Endon's kind of laying down and kind of poking his head out listening to Baron and Corn talk, but uh, Endon kind of stays quiet, doesn't really say anything, almost like he's trying to maybe lay down and take a nap. All right, so let's switch back down to the basement here. Usul, Abe Forth. So you guys have uh, been down there for a few minutes. You see Beekwam kind of pulling out some of his uh, little pieces of equipment along his table. He brought some of his ingredients out of the uh, uh, the back room over there. And over the course of the uh, four or five minutes, he's going to kind of ask you guys what's 
what's your intention what would you like to learn i mean what what's what do you got for trade so to speak because uh he doesn't do this for free yeah and uh he had two or three of them i recall that were i was interested in in learning how to do uh but and, and they were on the the potion list i don't recall what they are now though hey, he would have shared with you that uh some of the common ones he makes are some uh some healing salves that he makes uh he also uses a cure poison or a disease it's a fairly common one here with all the guys you can also make uh, that exhaustion cure which i already told you guys about uh, he also tells you about a couple special ones he can make, but uh, he doesn't have any of the ingredients right now to make them. Uh, he makes a, actually he's able to, he's found in the nearby forest a special kind of uh, mold that if he can get someone to somehow um, partake of it, eat some of it, it ac actually has stunning effects on it. Or they can be stunned for a, a minute or so, he says. Uh, he also has a uh, another uh, little juice he can make if he can find the right kind of leaf that will induce sleep uh, for a few hours for somebody. And he does it purely for medicinal purposes, you know. Nothing shady going on here. Well, Date like rape. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I believe um, I wanted to learn how to do like a... Uh, a greater healing and I think there may have been like a, a protection from cold or something along a cold one. Oh, does that work with herbalism kit? I thought that was alchemist supplies. Protection from cold. Uh, Let me look at my list here. I don't remember that but it's possible. I could be way off. So yeah, it's a fine line. Is that something I had you guys roll in the last session? I don't believe so, no. Okay, so I'm looking, um, so I'm looking at his character sheet, and that's not one of the ones that he commonly knows. Okay. Yeah, because I remember he was, you know, it, it on the list of things that he was going to sell, I had asked him to, um, if he could teach me how to do that. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was a greater healing, and then um, I don't remember which, which the other one was. And it may have been one of those potions that were already sold. Well, the exhaustion cure will help with the uh, uh, the cold effects if you get uh, exposed to the <clears throat> in environment outside. Because the exhaustion cure, if you get exposed to the uh, the cold temperatures, you get one level of exhaustion. So is okay. that maybe what you were thinking about? That's what that exhaustion cure uh, potion was. Hey, that'll, that'll work. Yeah. And, and I have money. All right, then. So... He'll ask you if you want to buy one, or do you want to try to figure out how to make one of these? Because that will affect the oh, price. I def yeah, I definitely want to learn how to make them. Um, we're not going to be able to keep Beacom around, so he probably doesn't want to hang out with us. Uh, I'd like to be able to take that knowledge and go. Okay, so you want to, him to teach you how to do the greater healing potion, right? That's correct. Okay, let me check my chart here. Where that one is. All right, well, I'm looking this up. I want you to roll from your uh, your herbalism kit uh, with advantage, and this is going to take uh, every bit of a long rest. It's going to take you several hours of him kind of demonstrating and then you trying it and then failing and trying again uh, to to get this down. So to make sure you, are, you and the party are okay with this, that it's going to take you at least six hours to kind of go through this training. Uh, of how to do this. Okay. Are you okay with that? Oh yeah. Okay. Where the heck, yeah. Where the heck I'm is fine with it. Really? All right. So. Oh, I did I did some banging on metal. So. Ooh, what a 13, huh? What does a 13 do? I'm looking at your chart now. Okay. Roll me a D100 next, Usul. Working on it here.
Right down the middle. Right down the middle. Almost there, guys. Just trying to find where it is on my two charts here. Because he's also going to share with you the ingredients you need to make this in the future as well. And you need to mark this down on your, your character sheet. Nope, not superior healing. I want greater healing. Ah, oh, there it is. Alright, you ready to write this down? Yep. Okay, to make this in the future, you need to find a a fluorescent a fluorescent orange nut that can be turned into juice. That's a 24, 18, 22. Those are good numbers for you to keep. Remember how we said you'd roll that when you're trying to find something? Yeah, 24, 18, 22? Correct. So you need somebody that's really good with uh, survival skills to, uh, to find that one based on those rolls. But after uh, six hours, you're able to kind of make a what you consider... A greater healing potion that you now have on your possession. And put a little asterisk or something next to that healing potion and let me know if or when you ever use that one. Don't you just love that information? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> healing potion question mark? Sounds like I should give that one away. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. You, you could have gotten a superior healing potion out of that. Or a disintegrate spell. I don't know. One or the other. <laughs> Alright. Eight fourth, was there something you're wanting to do during this uh, six hour training session between Usu and uh, Beacon? No. Uh, <laughs> I would have went to bed, but I wanted to go over to Beacon and say uh, Beacon. Hmm. Who hurt you? Who hurt me? You can tell me. I can't tell you squat. I don't know you. I know no one freaking hurt me. Can I inside check him? Sure. Funny. Uh, I gotta find my freaking dice. Ah, oh, there they are. Check his character sheet. Oh, okay, that's cool. You're you're not getting a very strong vibe about whether he's really being truthful or not. I mean, you, you kind of pride yourself on being able to read people. But uh, he seems to have, like, uh, just a stone poker face as you're kind of looking at him as he gives you that answer. Okay, um, well, if you ever want to talk, just let me know. I know something's wrong, but I understand that I'm a stranger, but I like to see. I understand that something is wrong, but it's all good, and I go to bed. <laughs> it kind of rolls eyes as you walk away. Yeah, I'm going to talk to a stranger. Like, I need a freaking shrink. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I'm going to go back to working with uh, Usul. I'll say that happened kind of in between while he's kind of working with Usul. Hi, right, Usul. Anything you're wanting to do in addition to that after the six hours? Oh, yeah. The um, exha exhaustion spell. You want to learn how to make that one, too? Yeah. Okay. That's going to be another six-hour ordeal to do that. I'm down. And you're down down to do that for six more hours? Yes, yes, sorry. Okay. 
Unfortunately, Beak one's not. He's like, well, damn it, son. I can't just sit here all freaking day and just teach you all kinds of stuff. He says, give me, give me a few hours to, to rest and get my other stuff together here. And, and I probably got to pick up some, some bear poop. He's been down here guarding his freaking door this whole time. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you again. Just give me some time to rest, okay? Okay. And I thought I'll... we only could stay here for a little bit. Yeah. All right, so what are you going to do uh, after the six hours then, Usul? Because April 4th, you said I you will... went upstairs to uh, take a rest as well, correct? April 4th? Me? Yeah, oh, okay. I had to take a long rest. Okay, all right, so you went upstairs with everybody else as well then. I do. Okay. Oh, someone just joined? Uh, yes, Dirk, yes, Dirk. we built in one. One sec, guys, I'll be I'll just uh, logging in. I won't be a sec. Oh, it's Didemeyer? It is Didemeyer. All right, we'll, we'll pick back up you in just a second. We're trying to finish these guys down in the basement. All right, so I'm sorry. Yeah, so no what were you doing after the six hours of uh, training? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to do, uh, get a rest in as well. I see a fireplace right there. Uh, all I need is four hours, so uh, I'll see if I can't get that in while Beacom is working on whatever his poop is. <laughs> if you try to uh, take lay down and take a nap down in the basement, Beacom's going to kind of stand over top of you with kind of a disconcerting look and says, uh, I don't think this is a place to sleep, my friend. Head up here with sure. the rest of them. Fair enough. I'll go upstairs as well. All right. So everyone else that was upstairs was going to take a, a long rest. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Since Didemeyer's back, Actually, I don't. I don't really need it. Well, that's your call. That's I'm why I'm asking. Ah, right. uh, why not? I'll We're in a warm it, place. It's safe. Ish. Okay. So Didemeyer, since you're here now, what I was uh, role playing with was you and Warak were kind of talking back and forth about whether or not you wanted to go back down to Gukamar to make sure your horse wasn't being turned into glue or beef stew or something. So yeah. I'll leave it up to you whether or not you decide to take a rest with us, these guys, or you want to use that opportunity to go down, back down to Gukamar and uh, find this, out the status of your horse. What was mm -hmm. your intention? I'll probably go, and if it's not that far, it seemed to be pretty safe on the way back, so uh, I'll go and rescue the horse or just let it free because I can summon another one anyway. Okay. All right, so if, uh, go ahead. if he's going to go down there, I might ask um, Beacom if he can explain uh, to him, to Diddy Meyer, wh what, the, what the ingredients he needs and see if he can pick that up on the way. Sure. Okay, he'll explain yeah. to you, sorry, he'll, he'll explain to you, Diddy Meyer, what these ingredients are. And he'll tell you that uh, you're not going to find it on the cliffs or in Gukumar. you got to go dig into one of these local forests here to try to find one of them. And I don't, oh, okay. and I don't have it written down anymore, um, Usul. Do you still have that in front of you? Usul? Yeah, I got... Uh... It was like a fluorescent orange... Uh, uh, nut, that's what it was, that you can turn yeah, into a, a, a fluorescent what... orange nut that you can turn into juice. Right. Right. Okay, I'll go look for you. And then I'll release the horse after I find everything. <laughs> I uh, guess if you get any fluorescent orange nuts, just bring them back and we'll figure out how to make the juice from them. Okie dokie. Um, and I'll ask, uh, is there any way, if I take my horse from here to where we're going to end up, is there any easy way or I have to you know, there's, there, it's got to be up into the mountains. We've got to go. Who are you asking? Um, the guy who runs the place here. Beekwam? The, uh, the, no, yeah, Beekwam. Well, well, do you ask Beekwam or Indon, since Indon's kind of your yeah. guide. Uh, yeah. Indon, well, I guess Beekwam will share with you that you know, this whole place is right now is under winter weather advisory, so to speak. So yeah, there's going to yeah. be quite a bit of uh, uh, very deep snow in, in some of the passes. You said there probably will be spots that not so bad, and Indon will also kind of chime in and agree that it's it's going to be uh, tough to kind of get around on a on a horse. Uh, he said yeah. that that's why he uh, kind of outfitted everybody with the snowshoes uh, for this journey yeah. uh, further north. No, I understand. 
Okay, so I'll just go because it's a living horse rather than a summoned one. I'll say, look, I'll I'll go release my horse, and then you know he'll uh, it's smart enough to know to go back home, and um, or just go somewhere where it can be safe, and then um, I'll come back on a not so uh, living one. <laughs> I'll use my magic to bring, bring come back. Um, okay, so uh, we'll do that. So I'll look for these fluorescent orange nuts and. Uh, I'll just, is there anything really dangerous besides, of course, an ancient uh, white dragon in the forest where I'm going to be for these nuts? Is there drop bears or yetis? Um, Bequa Man Warwick oh, will, will, will tell you that there, there's very little uh, forest between the hut and the uh, mm -hmm. uh, the cliffs. And plus, uh, Warwick will also uh, recommend that you guys go back the way you came through the, uh, mm -hmm. the tunnels underneath so that you can kind of yep. avoid part of the uh, staircase on your way down there. Yep. Um, Beacon will share with you that most of the forests where um, he's had uh, best luck finding this stuff is uh, the forest to the north. No problem. Okay, all right, so uh, we'll do that. I'll say to the guys, is it okay if I go, or you guys prefer if I hung around? What, what's your thoughts? You can go. Okay. <laughs> all right, so my number one fan. So Warwick's going to go with you, and again, he's also yeah. going to tell the group, says, okay, guys, this, this is probably going to be goodbye for now, because uh, I feel compelled to help uh, undo some of the wrong I've done when I struck down their captain down there in our little uh, fight with the Mind Flayer. Uh, I feel the mm -hmm. strong sense to uh, kind of undo that wrong, and I'm going to help those guys uh, rebuild Gukumar as best I can. So I uh, you know, basically wish you guys the best. And uh, hope you guys keep in touch. And uh, when you guys are done up in the Immortal Caverns, you guys are more than welcome to kind of stop back by through Gukumar anytime. Oh, that's nice. All right. Come on, Warwick. Let's go, buddy. All right. So that's going to take you roughly about four to five hours to go down there, do whatever you got to do, and then uh, uh, come back. The rest of the guys are taking a rest for uh, eight hours. Usul mm -hmm. was training for six. So, technically, Didemeyer, you're going to get back before everybody wakes back up. So, is there anything you want yeah, to do no, for that additional three to four hours? Uh, as long as I've got an hour worth of resting, I didn't do... I mean, I've pretty much used no no spells at all, so I'm just going to do a short rest when I get back so I can get my... Oh, have I, I haven't taken too many on these dice, have I? Um, so, yeah, look, I'll, I'll just go to try and find the nuts that they're after. And, uh, and then come back. Okay, if you're going to go look for that net, it's going to be to the forest to the north, and that's Beacon, I'll tell you, that's a probably half an hour to an hour walk just to get to the forest to the north. And uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll summon, uh, that's when I'll summon the, you know, the mythical one that, uh, the, the summon the steed. But I'll do that up here, so it can, uh, can track along that way, it might be a bit quicker. Okay. So it's your intention okay. to spend a couple hours looking for this um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, before you take off, Beacon will, will share with you. I said it's. I I don't really know you. I don't know your capabilities, but uh, mm -hmm. it's not always a smart thing to be walking out in the forest by yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. there's probably not much you'd be scared of. I mean, Beacon knows most of the bears around here, but that doesn't mean they know you, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Okay, all right. Um, well, then maybe I'll just go back in, and then I'll come back if uh, if I find the thing on the way. Then that's uh, a lucky thing. <laughs> so, so I'll I'll just go and take care of the horse and come on back. All right. So again, you're going to get back, but you'll get back before everyone else is done uh, napping. So again, I'm just trying to get clear mm -hmm. on what you're doing in the meantime while everyone else is still sleeping. Were you going to take a short rest? Or not? Yeah, I'll take. I'll, I will take a short rest. That, that's for sure. Like a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll take a couple. Okay. Hours. So you basically. Um, so I don't, I don't want to talk for you, but I'm assuming you're you're going to try to get up at the same time the rest of the group gets up. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, yeah, that that shouldn't be a, a problem. I mean, I'll spend a little bit of time if I see anything around the as I'm coming back, anything that'll look a bit like a forest um, or where this 
nut is, I'll, I'll take an extra hour or two having a look at it because I technically only need an hour. So why don't I have a look outside for, say, two hours and then I'll come back in. Okay, so you are going to walk north to the, the forest by yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> As long as it's day, oh, is it night time or day time? I'm no. okay with this. No, uh, if if see, it was by eight a.m. I'll say roughly eight thirty whenever you went down there. So no, it's probably about mm. one one o'clock in the afternoon by the time you get back up to the okay. house. All right. So what I might actually now I know that this thing is actually north rather than south. What I'll say to Warwick is, are you okay if you come north with with me and we first go there? And then we go, and then I just come straight back. That might be the easiest way, because then it's first thing in the morning. Ah. So me and Warwick will go to look for the nut first, and then we'll go back to Gugumar, and then I'll just come straight back to Gugumar. Uh, from Gugumar. All right. Are you trained in survival? Uh, no, I'm not trained in survival. No, I've just got the shoes and everything I need, so okay. Warwick will go out. Let me check uh, Warax here. Because that's information you'd probably need to know, Usul, before you send them out to look for this. Because you'll understand how difficult or easy these things are to find and locate. Let me just check Warax real quick to see if he's... Wait, wait. Am I the only one trained in survival? <laughs> I hope someone else is. Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, Warax not either. Uh-oh. Let's go. You gonna let him go, Usul? Usul, are you there? Uh, I don't think he's back yet. Oh, he stepped out? Oh. Yeah, he, he burbed. Well, isn't this a quandary? Let's see, am I gonna send them out to die, or do I want to... Ro roll, a t roll a dice? <laughs> <laughs> well, if we, if we open up the, the thing and there's a blizzard outside, we won't go. But if, it's, if it looks pretty calm and it's, we're only going out for an hour, we should be all right. You won't get very far in an hour in a big snow jump anyway. No, it's, it's relatively clear outside. I mean, you got a cold uh, mm -hmm. uh, wind blowing, but uh, it's, yep. it's, it's a relatively clear sky. Don't look yeah. like there's any kind well, of signs of uh, storm clouds coming in. No worries. Okay. I'm proficient in survival. I'll go with you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Come on, Sweet. let's go. But you were taking a rest, weren't you not? Oh, Corn's fine, then. Yeah, but I only need four hours because I'm an elf. Okay. Yep, we'll get oh, it. Oh, wait, I'm enough yeah, too. Sleep later. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget. <laughs> I'll remind you. Guess what? Oh, no, sorry. M dirty elves. I never play elves because I hate them. Alright, come on, come on, you guys that only need four hours rest. Let's go. Okay, so the four no, of you. Okay, oh, here, let me do it this way. Let me switch back to the uh, eight, yes. eight fourth. You're upstairs, right? Uh huh. Okay, let me move your icon upstairs and let's change this. Uh, I can't cut it, so I'll just paste it in here. Alright, so whoever is going to go for uh, a walk uh, to the north into the forest, place yourself down here by uh, Warak. Let's do it that way. Okay, here we go. Okay, Baron says screw that shit. Right. I need to sleep. Actually, I don't even need to sleep. Why am I sleeping? I'm coming. <laughs> Shit. I'm full on everything. I'm fine. I don't need to sleep. See okay, how charismatic did he is? He just says, why don't we go outside to our death? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You're going oh, great. Great. <laughs> Don't let the glowing eyes fool you. I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Soul's back. All right. So, Usul, it oh, doesn't matter now, Usul, uh, the four of you are going to go north before Dinamar and Warak go down to release the horse, correct? That's right. Okay, yeah, so we're going to go foresting first. And then when you come back, you're taking your short rest. Is that what I understand? Uh, so when, when we come back, after we find the nut, I then go get the horse set up with Warwick. I leave Warwick there, and then I'll just come straight back, and then I'll have at least an hour's worth of short rest before right. the guys wake up after right. Yeah, I'm not walking back down. I'm, right just, I'm just making sure that Quarren didn't take uh, the benefits of a, of a rest before you guys are leaving. Oh, okay. Did you? Yeah, that's just my HP. I can mark it back down. <laughs> just HP. Who cares about that? <laughs> All right. Basically, don't need it. I thought it's we fine. got it, and then we're going. Okay, so this is all happening while Usul's being uh, trained uh, downstairs on uh, uh, 
on this herbalism stuff. And a fourth, you came upstairs to take a short rest as well, correct? Uh, a long rest. A long so it's rest. Four hours for me. Right. Uh, that's what I meant by short rest. You're an elf, so you get that benefit. All right. So here's what I want to do. I want uh, all four of you. I actually, uh, Quan, are you the only one that's that's trained in survival? I, I am so. also. Oh, Baron is as well. I, don't, I, I hate elves. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't me. Okay. My, my character is not a freaking elf. <laughs> Alright, so here's what I want you to do. Either all four of you will roll for survival three times. Can I go also? I, I don't care who goes. It's up to you guys. I'll go. I want to see what this, this stranger that we have oh, no idea goodness. that's leading us out into the middle of the woods to the north of us. that We, have, we don't know who he is. Or anything like that. I want to see what we're doing. Yeah, so did I'm back, I'm back and core and up. I'm sorry, say that again. back and core and up. So make sure that everything's okay. So did okay. is, so we... is the only one that I believe Usu will explain this to. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So did I... He explained it to us. That, that's, that's, we're that's, going to the forest. that's what we're about yeah, to find out. Tell you guys. <laughs> Uh, so, so, he so says, we're following this guy into the forest for a strange, strange reason of finding a magical orange. Some kind of a fluorescent yellow orange, orange, orange nut. I was gonna say, has everybody seen um, Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Didemar, give me a uh, a straight up. How do I roll this? A straight <laughs> up uh, uh, wisdom roll. To see if yeah, you can uh, explain the intricacies of what this nut looks like, because Usu went in quite a lot of detail. Uh, okie dokie. Even before, <laughs> yep, there we go. <laughs> would um, okay, would so Aforth know anything about this this nut? Uh, are you? Well, you weren't there when. Uh, oh yeah, you were there. You were there yeah, when. I was. Uh, so, um, you can roll like, a note. Read about it in like a book or something. What's your background? A um, I forget. Because there's Apprentice, so I probably read lots of books. Okay, just don't know if you were... <laughs> you don't have herbalism as a skill, do you? No, but I mean, what if I read an herbalism book sometime? Right, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I get it. You owe me a, a wisdom uh, uh, check as well. Oh, not a history check? Nope, just a wisdom. To see if you can remember what he just told you. <laughs> <laughs> I just say it's an orange nut. can turn it to juice, and that's all I remember. <laughs> All right, so here here's the deal. Um, most of you got a pretty good idea what uh, these two are talking about. Uh, not hundred percent sure, so I'm gonna do one of two ways: either Baron or Corin will roll this uh, herbalism check with advantage, three rolls, or you guys can all roll. Um, shit. Everybody except for a corn and Baron will, will roll at disadvantage. Okay. Which which way do you guys want to do it? You guys decide. I think we let the good guys roll it with advantage. Sure. Okay. So it was one of us. Yeah, one of us. I'll just pretend that I'm looking around for things. I'm gonna assume that Quarren is better. Quarren, <laughs> take the lead. That might wait, be a good wait, assumption, uh, I don't know. Did go for it, buddy. Alright. So I'm doing it three times with advantage? Yep. And what were the numbers we needed, Usul? I was, uh, 18, 22, 18, 22, no. 18, 22, no. Hold on just a second here. Yeah, it was like 24, 18, 22, I think. Yeah, so, so since, since you're looking for that specific thing, as long as you roll that or higher, Again, on all three rolls, then you're able to find it. Uh oh. Where's Cecil? Right, uh -oh. Here we go. Oh, nice. So the first one was an 18. You got a 22. Oh. Second one, yeah, didn't quite get it. <laughs> you find you have to uh, roll exactly that to find it. Close. He's got to roll that or higher. I mean, this is a, a pretty oh. high level type of a potion to make here, so it's a very specific type of a nut. He's got to look. That's why herbalism works. If he explains what you're well, looking yeah, for, that's a, right? That's another thing. Like you can make um, potions with herbalism and not a alchemist set, right? Uh, it's kind of a combination of the two, but yeah. Uh, so I mean, because I was thinking about taking uh, on another character. If I get in as alchemist supplies, would that be okay, or do I have to do herbalism set? 
No, if if you do alchemy, I'll, it'll be a different type of a um, table on it, making up for that. And the way I've always thought about that, al it's alchemy it's will make uh, slightly uh, different types of potions. There'll be maybe some that kind of cross over, but alchemy will make more of like the uh, the fire and poison. I just and, typed it out there. Like that. Oh, I always thought alchemy was just potions. No, alchemy is and the transmutation like of stuff. Alchemy is like wildfire from Game of Thrones. Yeah. All right, so you guys, over the course of the next, I'll say, a couple hours, uh, you're able to find several nuts, some of them that look kind of like orange, but uh, when you bring them back and Beacom looks at them, he's like, nope, 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 These, that's that's not the right stuff. Close, but no cigar. Is any of it edible? <laughs> oh. Beacom kind of looks at you, well, go ahead. Tell us if it's edible. Uh, Denimar, this one is edible. Will you give it a try? <laughs> yeah, okay. I bite into one to see what it tastes like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading Silith's comment there. <laughs> oh yeah, where is Silith? <laughs> He's not here yet. <laughs> All right, and now, so you're biting into one of these things? Yeah, yeah sure. Been into it because All right. I told him. Hold on one second, I gotta look on a certain page. Oh, I die. You guys need to learn not to eat stuff. Come on now. <laughs> uh, I, 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 if we, die, if we get nuts, talk. we're going to want to put them in our mouth, of course. All right, Baron. I'm Canadian. Baron, first, I, I want you to roll me a D4. Please be a one. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> now, I want you to roll me a D100 uh, with advantage, or roll it twice. Oh, this is and not and where I thought this was going to go. It's, it's you know, this, more. this is what D&D &D is. We this is what D&D &D is. here in this group. <laughs> okay, this you want a 61 exactly and a 34. Let me look at this. This reminds me of that 10,000 wild magic page surge. The sorcerer rolled 407, which become, you become a god, and he left the game. <laughs> that actually happened in one of my sessions. I was like, okay. He, be he became a god, though. Okay. He became a god, yeah. On the 10,000 Wild Magic Surge page. All right, Baron, I need you to do me a favor. Somewhere on your character sheet where yes. it's readily available, put that 61 down. Okay. You bite I'll into it. Right. You bite into it, and you feel yourself like, almost like there's, like, little fireflies buzzing around in your head. You're not sure what the heck it is, but just nothing, doesn't feel like anything bad. It's like a little tingly feeling, and almost like you're seeing, like, spots... Maybe on your peripheral vision, but uh, that's it right now. It's, it's like he's a little buzzed, and then he's got dots. <laughs> he's got the tingly sensation. Oh, who ate that? I'm sorry. All right, I gotta put a me, little... Ben. Right, Baron. Yeah. How are you feeling, Baron? Cool. I gotta put a little icon next um, to you. Yeah, I feel pretty good. Can I insight check him? <laughs> you can insight, yeah. <laughs> Eighteen. Are you really are they, feeling pretty good? I don't know if it's a, even like a deception. It's, 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 if you're lying, <laughs> like, it's deception. He's, but he doesn't feel bad. So he doesn't feel bad. He feels. He just feels like a little bit tickly, which is oh. like. Yeah. So yeah, pretty good. Had a, had a good sleep. Here, Haven't try this one. Yet. You know, I feel pretty good. Nut. <laughs> um. <laughs> What was that? You're, uh, going, you're going to try one night for treating him as no, an No, I ain't trying any. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dirk. I think, I mean, sorry, are you guinea pigging me right now? Uh, no, no. These are perfectly fine. You said you felt fine. Here, uh, Dinamar, you should try this one. I get like a black one. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at the guys. No, that's okay. I'll have my limit of that. <laughs> no, I mean, this one heals you. Oh, really? Can I do a deception check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. I'm so good at this one. Hold on. I have a, I have a zero modifier. <laughs> yeah, let's see how good you have. Even before natural one. <laughs> okay, roll your uh, insight there, Didemar. See, if, you, you, see if he fools you or not. It'll be more fun if it's true, if it works. Yeah, exactly. Uh, inside, inside, inside. There we go. 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> He's good at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Paladin. Okay. It's the black one, right? Well, if you like it so much, why don't you have a taste yourself? It doesn't work really well with elves. <laughs> oh, I got you. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Elves suck, I know. They just you know, it doesn't sit well with us. I heard it sits really well with uh, the glowing type human people that you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, look, I, um, I'm going to go and get the horse back so you guys enjoy the nuts. And I'll, uh, I'll toddle off. I will, we'll and I give it to Baron, and we can go, I guess. <laughs> I'm not. That's what I'm adding to my inventory. A nut. It's a black nut. <laughs> I've got a black nut. Okay. Thanks I have a black, black one. I have a purple one. I have <clears throat> a... Well, I don't have the black one anymore. All right. So at this point, I hear you, Dinamar. You and uh, Warak are going to head back down and free your horse. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And Corn and Apeworth, what were you guys going to do? Because that was probably two to three hours to go out and scrounge up these nuts and... And watch Baron eat one of them. So, okay, I tell it to the rest of the people after Didemeyer's gone. So, you guys are all okay still with the stranger in our in our group? I mean, he hasn't I mean, killed he, us yet. We, uh, we have this other guy who actually just ran me and killed us. So. Oh, he killed you guys? <laughs> I mean, he killed one of us. Oh. Okay, I just, I'm just still a little hurt since, you know... Uh, hang on, the door. Oh yeah, I guess we'll wait for him again to come back. And I want to dimension door into the secret room that Equum has. <laughs> Which secret room you talk about? Um, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to wait until hopefully he's asleep at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this was like two, three hours into it. Uh, Usul and the rest of them are still in the basement, kind of doing their training thing up here. Um. Are you guys going to do your elf trance thing for the next three to four hours? What That's what intention? I'm doing. Well, you're still being trained while this is all this is going on. Oh, you you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you haven't got to that point yet. So, or I can do tomorrow heading back down to Gukumar. So I'm going to set them just through the mind. That's where you guys are heading out in the room here. Uh, Corn, are you going to take that rest now, or what are you going to do next? Did we lose Corn? I think he said he had to go for a second. Okay. But I can cast um, as a ritual Tiny Hut to give us a safe place to sleep. <laughs> okay. I mean, right, it's useful, I think. I mean, that's one useful spell Aveworth has, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to you guys. Do you want to give us a Tiny Hut? I mean, he's going to be gone for like five hours, right? Who, Didemeyer? Didemeyer? Yeah. It's it's probably gonna be yeah close to four hours before he gets down there and back yeah. I'm back. Sorry about that. Do you want to take a long rest, Corin? I do. Are you an elf? I'm sorry, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm a wood elf. Uh, I can um create, cast a this a protection spell on us, and we can take a, a oh I mean a four hour rest for you. Not... Yeah. I mean, it should be, in case you want a safe, warm, well, you know, dry place to sleep. Sure, do we really need that, though? Yeah, this oh, I guess home. we can go back home. Or, I mean, not home, but, you know, Beekwams. Yeah, I think we should just go back to Beekwams. Well, you guys are back at Beekwams at this point. That's where the whole nut-tasting exercise would have happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't have that was outside. <laughs> Yeah, then I'll just go and like lie down next to uh, Endon or something. Is uh, oh no, that works with him. Um, uh, is Endon here? Yeah, Endon's still being elevated in Sylvia's flying broom slash tent uh, concoction because he can't quite hey, get Endon. around. Hey, Endon. Hmm. How are you? How are you feeling? About the same as yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, but I think I found something that might help with you. <laughs> that looks at you a little worried eye, and, and that would be? Um, there's this nut right here, and I pull out the black one. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> He's like, uh, uh, that doesn't exactly look I mean, edible. I, well, it, it is. I mean, it is a nut. We, uh, we got the information from Beakwom to find like nuts for a... A greater healing potion, and I think this is one of them. Maybe it'll just help with like the internal healing. His eyes will kind of look at you, and then he'll 
turn over to Quarren as well and says, is this guy for real? Well, yeah. No, he's asking that of Quarren. Baron ate a different colored one and he said he felt all right, but yeah. I don't know about the black one. You kind of poke his head out the other side of the tent and says, Baron, is that true? Oh, huh? huh? Um, yeah, I feel okay. A little, little tingly, but <laughs> no, other than that. Yeah, see, and Don, don't be such a baby. All right, so out of character, do you ser seriously think these nuts are okay? Or are you trying to be deceptive here? No, I do. <laughs> you think they're okay? I think they're. I think this one's okay. Yeah. Okay, give me a persuasion check. Oh, okay. Let me pull up. I'm so good at that, also. <laughs> Where did I put end on? Oh, there he is. Oh, no, he's not there. <laughs> What's your roll? Oh, a 12? Oh, necrotic damage. That's what you're laughing at. Where the hell did I move Indon's sheet to? I mean, he's an experiment person. I mean, who knows? So we just part of humanity experiments? Is that what it is? I mean, I'm trying. I mean, I'm trying to understand his backstory some more. I think so. Um, you know, he's like a, like a. He's kind. Of, he's kind of going to be really similar to. The wizard I'm making, but less headstrong. I think a fourth more headstrong and like tough. Okay, you, you hand the uh, little black nut to Endon. He kind of pulls it between his two his fingers and he looks at it and he looks back up at you and looks over at Baron again a little bit. Yeah. And he says, uh, "I think all I need is rest," and he hands it back to you. Oh, okay. Anything else, guys? Otherwise, I'm going to go back uh, down to Usu while you guys are resting. Okie doke. I had Usu. So, again, while all that's going on, you and uh, Beacom would have um, worked out your little training mechanism and uh, gained your little bit of knowledge of what you've got there, your little greater healing potion with the asterisk next to it. Anything else you want to do for the... You said after you're done with that, you want to head upstairs and try to rest as well? Or what was your intention? Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, Beacom needs to do some work, and so uh, I can get a, at least a short rest in, or uh, depending on how long Beacom takes, I can I can take a, my full four-hour long rest. Okay. Although I don't think I used any spells. Oh, I, I guess I just used, um, I changed shape once. So uh, I can I can get away with a short rest if, if uh, Beacom's ready in a couple of hours, or... Um, if he needs longer, I can do the full four-hour long rest. Yeah, Beacom tells you that he needs a good probably three or four hours to kind of do some other chores around the house, whatever. That's uh, kind of falling behind since he's been working with you, but he said he'll work with you, with you tonight on maybe possibly learning another one. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'll just take my a long rest then. Okay, I'm going to move you guys back upstairs then. That's where he'll, he and uh, Momo... We'll you, escort you guys back upstairs, and Momo will kind of circle around. Oops, just pick up Momo. He'll kind of circle around the, the door where you guys came through a few times, and then plop right down here and kind of sit right on top of the trap door. Not sleeping, but kind of got his head laying down on the ground, just looking around. And Beacon will kind of quietly... Wait, is he holding a hostage here? Are you saying that out loud, or are you, what are you, what are you doing? Well, okay, so is this the way we get up and down? Yeah, that's where you guys went, came out from the basement right there. Little trap door right there. Uh, so he is holding his hostage. Well, Beacom just kind of made a little circle like a, uh, like a dog does. And he uh, hopped back on top of the where the trap door was. So he, no one's trapped in the basement, if that's what you're asking. You guys are basically all upstairs on the upper level. Yeah, I mean, we're trapped in the upper level. Well, there's the front door right here. You've got windows all around here. There. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's paranoid after eating those nuts. <laughs> so after Beacon comes up, Beacon will walk over here and, and uh, grab one of his journals and come back over to the table and sit down and kind of pull out a journal and you see him start kind of scribbling some stuff down. Being real quiet, got a little pipe that he's kind of smoking on. That he's kind of looking through his journal. Usul, you guys are all taking a 
arrest now, or Abe Ward, you trying to do something shady? What, what's what's your next move? No. Okay. Why would I do something shady? No, you said something about doing yeah. a dimension door or something oh, earlier. Oh, so. good at with him right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going outside. <laughs> How right. long is he gonna be here? Are you asking that? Big <laughs> boom. You're asking him what now? Uh, what are you doing up here? I'm just taking notes. I just like to oh. keep meticulous notes of comings and goings within this area. Not You're okay with us being here for like more than a day? You kind of see him roll his eyes a little bit. He says, uh, I'm not exactly a hotel, if you know what I mean. I think one day and you guys will be good to go. He kind of shakes his head. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Everybody's been hurt. I mean, I've been enslaved, so, you know. Um, everybody has their baggage. Yeah, everybody's got their baggage. I agree. You see him put his and nose back into his journal. <laughs> put his nose back into his journal, starts writing some notes. Okay, with a straight face, A4 says, and you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you see, Bigwin's going to be drawing a little aim for the time next to him. <laughs> Give me a uh, perception check. Give me a perception check, Abe Forth. Oh my god, he's sort of stealing from me. <laughs> Hold on. 14. No, but that is a pretty good idea. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you don't notice anything. <laughs> uh, I want to cast uh, this for an hour. Get my owl back. Ah, okay. Did your owl die? Oh, that's yeah, right. a long time ago yeah. from the dragon. All right, did I the dragon? Yes. Try to remember. Did I create a s familiar for you? Or did I just give you a small owl last time? I forgot. I have this guy. Oh, you still got him? Oh, you brought him in. I can't move him. You can't move him? Okay, here, let me go in here. And I'll give you access. Do, do, do. There you go. Now you should have access to him. Let me know if you don't. I'll just stay next to me while I wait for everybody to come together. <laughs> okay. Alright, so everyone else is taking a rest here, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, just making sure. Beacom's staying at the table. Usul, are you sleeping right there on the table, or where are you sleeping at? Did we lose uh, Usul again? Oh, you're there. No, I'm here, I'm here. I didn't realize that was where my uh, guy was, so... Yeah, I'll just uh, find a uh, place here. Where's the fire? Uh, I think the fire is going to be right here. Whoops, I'm going to click on the right screen. There we go. Yep. There we go. Alright, that, and Abe Forth, are you going to be sleeping? Are you going to be doing your trance thing? What are you doing here? Uh, I can take two long rests. Two long rests? What's mm -hmm. that mean? Yeah, I already, I already took a, a long rest to get my spells back. Ah, you already took your four hours? Well, I mean, if there's more time, I guess I'll, um... I guess technically you guys all went to the, the forest first, found the stuff, and you just not came back, so no one's really had a chance to do the, the any kind of a rest yet. Uh, Remember? I guess I'll look at the books. <laughs> okay. Alright, so I'm assuming the rest of you guys will get your, your long rest in here, a full eight hours. Um, Didamar and Warak will come back without any kind of, uh... No, actually, Warak won't come back. Work's gone. But Didemeyer will come back pretty much the same way you came before. Ah, uh, oh shit, you can come back the same way you came before. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> you'll, uh... Oh yeah, as you pass through that same little uh, cavern again, that you guys yep. came through the first time and the, uh, the alarms start going off, as I recall, or some loud clap noise. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just like last time, Beekwim will uh, will appear about 30 feet further down the tunnel uh, after you walk through that little alarm thing, and he'll sit be standing there with his arms folded. Ah, you again, huh? 
Come on. No, I said I was coming back. <laughs> and he'll so I'll come back up. He'll lead you back up through the the tunnels again, back up through the top. No and, worries. And uh, kind of he'll tap on the little trap door here. Yep. Momo will move all the way, and you guys will be able to crawl back through. He's like, all right, it'll be quiet because everyone else is kind of sleeping. So there's your, your buddies. You can either lay down with them or do whatever you want. But tomorrow morning you're gone, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, so everyone can get the benefit from their whatever rest they just took. So go ahead and either roll your hit dice, replenish your hit points, whatever it is you're doing. Daddy, guess what? I got this. Ooh, and... And Dinamar's shield is talking from the grave. Okay. Yes, I hear, I hear these voices. It's, it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, while I'm, while I'm resting, I might uh, try and talk to my spiritual advisor <laughs> up in the big ether and say, you know, uh, have you got any advice on where we're going and what we're doing? You're asking that a big one? Uh, no, 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 you know how Azamar's got the ability to talk to their spirit things. Um, I'm just going to see, you know, overall for this finding of this immortal ice, if there's anything that it wants to tell me. I'm, I'm more sort of focused on, you know, is there any chance we'll run into those slard creatures on the way? So as you start your conversation, Beacon will kind of uh, put a hand on your, on your uh, forearm and kind of say, let's, let's take a conversation outside. Let's let these guys uh, oh. at least get their, their peace and quiet and their rest. Oh, Shall okay. we? Right. And he'll kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. He'll lead you out the, the front door here. I'm definitely oh. following. That's chilly out there. <laughs> uh, you weren't sleeping, Abe Forth? No, 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 no. Okay. All right, let me move you out here and let me... I think I got fog of war going on here, so hold on a second. Let me reveal this. Alright, that's good enough for this. So he'll lead you back outside and kind of along the side of the, the, the building over. Oop, go back to my pointer, Brian. Up to the side here a little bit. It says, alright, so. And you're doing this through your mind link? Is that what you said? Or are you actually talking to him? Um, well, I was doing it uh, with, a, with a mind link and just sort of, you know, looking around for spiritual guidance type of deal and say, yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know that was you, but yes, yeah, speak with me. What, what's your thoughts? Is there anything that you need? Anything that... Um, so you weren't uh, even talking at all? The Beakum read your mind? Apparently. <laughs> you said you were speaking into his mind, right? Oh, no, no, no. Um, what, what we have the ability to do is, is, um, as a mass is you get a spiritual guide. Yep. And it's, and it's that power where you can talk to them and they'll sort of like give you some information. Oh, I am so that sorry. Up and that's it. I, I totally missed that's that. Right. I just thought it was Beakwam. I said, <laughs> I like to like connect to a minus plus <laughs> yeah. Beakwam is your god. I, just, yeah, I look at him and I go, now I know why you want me out of your house. <laughs> Alright, so rewind. Alright, so yeah, you weren't just, talking to Beakwam. I apologize. I thought you were talking no, to Beakwam at that time. Just, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just sort of praying. But um, I, will, I will talk to Beakwam a little bit later. <laughs> okay. And I'm going through all his books. <laughs> and Beacon's kind of giving you oh, the stink right. eye. He says, ah, help yourself. There's nothing in there I'm worried about. That's fine. But just put stuff back where you got it from, all right? I don't want my, my stuff messed up. Keep it in order. I understand. All right. Things aren't always in order for us, especially for you, but it's fine. All right. All right, so Didamar, I'm not as familiar with ASMR, so how's this supposed to work with your talking to your Ooh, spiritual buddy? Um... Let me just check. One sec, I'll go find it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's just like vague guidance. Okay. Where is this freaking book? And I'm pulling them all the time. <laughs> 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 That's a like critical role reference if I got it. <laughs> oh yeah, the recent um library. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like just vague kind of responses that you get, but what my question more so was about how how often do they actually respond to you, was my more specific question. Okay, so it's guidance to... Yeah, so it says an asthma... Functions uh, only in dreams. 
Yeah, so while I'm asleep. So as such, the uh, let's have a look. This being usually a diva provides guidance yeah, to the Azimar through uh, the uh, connection function only in dreams. As such, it's the guidance is not a direct command or a, sim um, or a simple spoken word. Instead, the Azimar receives visions, prophecies and feelings. What page is it on? Yeah. On page 104. 104. Of the Bolo. Right. Right, but I heard you say it's while you're sleeping though, right? Yeah, because I've gone for a, a rest. And oh, so you decided you're going to rest instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so you can I'll talk to your, your buddy there? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so you're asking your spiritual guide what say your question again yeah so it's it's what does this journey hold for us to find the immortal life maybe just some you know will we bounce into these creatures that can change shape or is there anything terrible waiting for us and uh is it the home of where the big white dragon lives because i thought that's probably i know that red dragons and white dragons had to go at each other and it was around there where they all got melted so i'm just trying to work out what to do and uh, what might be some of the challenges in a very rough manner. <laughs> that's, a Gives whole, a bit of a help. that's a whole lot of questions. Okay. He wants to have a Wikipedia <laughs> page of this dungeon <laughs> and, and adventure. And then, and then, of course, what's going on with Edford? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I would love to hear that, even though I'm not there. But okay. <laughs> Alright, so what is the... Uh, do you have a, a description of what your celestial guide is like? I don't want to... Yeah, it says here, the role that I made was... I thought you were able to kind of come up with it on your own. I mean, is it like a, yeah, is it like uh, a white angelic type of being? Is it like a demon? Is it like, you know, what is it like? No, no, no. It's a, yeah, it's definitely a angelic white thing. Um, and let's have a look if it tells me about it. Um, this one is sort of like a, a, a caring one. Um, and what else is there that I've got? Let's check it out. So it's Serafina, so apparently it's a girl. Um, it is compassionate and hopeful. That's all I know, really. So I suppose it's, that's its nature. Okay. All right, so let's see what I can do with this here. So as you're sleeping away and having these visions of this angelic being that you're trying to have a conversation with kind of you can almost hear the words flowing around in your brain all these different questions you're throwing out there and everything and you see these two white bright hands just kind of reach out from the dark and they kind of gently place their palms upon the side of your head hush my child too many questions do not get too many answers the journey forward is is dangerous yes it is there will be many things that you will you will encounter and learn from this adventure. But what you do with that is still up to you. The journey is still far to the north. You will have help to get you there. And then the hands kind of slowly kind of fade off the side of your face and back into the darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that, that's more than I want to tell you, damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good, that's good. Hey, I've got friends, that's a bonus. <laughs> I'm, I'm always a half glass type fool guy. So, okay, okay no, that's good. Um, and we'll have help. So I'll wake up when I wake up. And then I'll, I'll look quickly to Beekwim and yeah, then I'll have that quick conversation and I'll say to him, if we go outside, because uh, I'm only going to benefit from a short rest. And I'll say, um, you must know more about the things that are happening to the north than you let on. You've survived so long here and you're sitting on top of a, a gnome place that's very, very old. So I expect that you yourself are very, very old. And maybe there's a lot of stuff we don't know about you. But um, this immortal ice, will it cause any problems? Or do you think it's a thing that we'll find? 
I kind of stand there with one foot behind him up against the wall and still smoking on a pipe. Uh, there's about, you know, six inches of snow out here right now. He kind of looks over at you and blows a smoke ring. So as I told you before, I don't, I don't know about this immortal ice stuff. All I've heard is these stupid rumors about uh, to the north, supposedly where this immortal caverns are is where the undead are still thriving there. I can't tell you much, much beyond that. As far as me being old and knowing a bunch of shit, that's just a old wives' tale. Yes, I've been around a while, but I've I've called this place my home. I don't travel as much as I used to. And that's more than I wanted that's to tell insane. you. <laughs> I'll say okay. So I understand you're introverted, and it's probably best that, that you you find safety and security um, alone. I get it. Um. Thank you for your hospitality, by the way. It's very nice what you've done. Kind of just humped a little bit. It's uh, not really hospitality. It's just I don't like stupid people doing stupid things. So if you need a rest, you need a rest. And at that, uh, Didamar, give me a perception check. Okie dokie. Really bad. <laughs> you know? Wow, that is pretty bad. All right. <laughs> so, as you're having this conversation, you see uh, Beekwin put one finger up to you, kind of like tell you to hush, and then he darts across the front of his yard over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, just wondering if you're going to like follow him. Yeah. Just going to watch him. What do you want to do here? No, I want to go. I'll follow. I'll follow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let him go off into danger by himself. What you see? That's like. How about my owl's name was called? As you follow him around the corner, you see he's swooping yeah. down, almost like right in front of him. Are these three large griffins. Uh, they kind of, they see him going right towards it, but they also see the other two behind you, and they see him kind of, cup, these two kind of flutter back up into the air, up into the sky a little bit. Uh, this one kind of came towards Beacon, but then steps back a little bit, and then Beacon reaches around and holds a hand out to you two, says, just, just stay back. They don't know you. It's okay. It's okay. But let me, yeah. let me, let me handle this. And he walks up closer to, uh, to this one here, and reaches up and kind of puts a hand on uh, the beak of this griffin and the two kind of looks... Did he bow first? I'm sorry? Did he bow first? Did Beekwon bow first? Yeah. Uh, you didn't see him bow first. He's re referencing... <laughs> okay. referencing I was just wondering Potter. from Harry Potter. He's like, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to bow to him. Tears his face off. <laughs> kill you. Where's it as a hat? If he doesn't bow back, well, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> So you see uh, the eagle reach down, you know, stoop down with his beak, and Beacon's got one hand on his beak, and you see him kind of look at each other in their eyes for, for what well, seems like a few minutes, but it's probably more like just a few seconds. And then Beacon uh, kind of pats him on the beak and turns back around to you and says, uh, we've got some trouble, guys. Uh, these are my, uh, what do you call them, bird friends? Eyes? Uh, oh, those are your friends. I got... I got lots of friends here, just not people like you. These are a lot more. Anyway, never mind. Uh, I got. Do you, want, do you need help? <sighs> yeah, actually, if uh, you guys Let's are. Let's go, Sir Dedemeyer. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> like, hold on. Hey, wait. Let... Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, let's let's. We don't have a lot of time, but I gotta go inside. I gotta. These guys gotta go. I can't leave them in the house. And he kind of brushes by you guys and heads back into the house. Oh. He turns back around, walks over this one, touches him on the beak. They look each other in the eyes a little bit more. And you see this one kind of fly up and stand on top of the uh, the well right here, perch on top of it. The other two kind of circling around in the air uh, above it. And then Beacon goes, runs back inside again. You guys going to follow him? You going to stay out here with the um, griffins? One, one thing really quickly, when he was touching the, uh, the griffin, was he casting a spell? Give me an arcana check. Uh, some that Abe Force got out. Yeah, he he was definitely doing some kind of like a mind leak or 
it's almost like some some way of communicating uh, with the Griffin is what you gather from that. All right, so Beacon runs inside, and whether you guys are ready for your long rest or not, he starts kind of shaking all of you guys. Okay, okay, get up. Time to go. Time to go. Everybody up. Runs around, kind of nudges everybody, uh, and grabs the tent. Beacon's in, shakes it, nudges Corrin. Just Momo, Momo, just just stay right here for a few more minutes, and then we got we got to go somewhere. All right. Says everybody up. Everybody up. Well, who, what's happening? What what's going on? It's, it's time to go. I know I said you could stay another day, but I've got stuff to do, and you can't stay here. You gotta go now. And, Are we being attacked? And he, What's going on? Okay. Uh, uh, I thought you said you needed help, Big Bum. Oh, you ran back inside? He goes, yeah, I, I, I need your help, but you can't stay here. If you want to help, that's fine. Come come outside. Just well, yeah. Out. I mean, we're going to help you from inside your house? Out, 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 out. <laughs> out, out. So I'll be gonna end on. What is the emergency? I'll come back out. Stay here. He's like, uh, he'll look around you guys. Okay, guys, this is, it's, this may be a goodbye. I don't know, but there, there's, there's trouble in the, uh, uh, the forest up here. There's some, evidently some bandits that, that stole, uh, some of my friends, their, their baby eggs here. And they, they can't, they can't get to them because they're deep in a forest somewhere. So I'm going to go see if I can find them and, and, and help them get them back. These damn, these damn trappers just don't know when to freaking leave us alone. So, Come with me if you want, but you gotta go. And you kind of walk over uh, to one can, of them. You want us to destroy them? Destroy what? Don't I want you to destroy the eggs? No! <laughs> the people who stole the eggs. I don't care about... The, well, do with them what you will, but we gotta help save these these uh, these chicks. These are these okay, are, these are very we precious. Go. We should stop can talking you, and go. <laughs> can you, Griffin, get us as close as they can to where you guys were? And he'll... he'll Look around at you guys and you start counting. One, two, three. It's like, uh, they can... These three here are probably big enough to carry maybe two of us each. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, I can fly. And, and Sylvia, out of character, she says she has her broom, so she can kind of tow in Don, <laughs> blow him on a rope or something, and, and fly on her broom as well. It's like, yeah, 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 I think... I think we can get the, the three of them to get us closer, but are you guys all willing to help? Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, sure. You, you helped us, we'll help you. Well, maybe, maybe Warak wasn't full of crap. You said you I guys did, were, were worth the wait. But oh well. Alright, so come on then, and he'll kind of motion to the, the three griffins, and each one of them will kind of step down, or set down to the ground, and bow down, kind of allow on two people per to uh, climb okay. on top. <laughs> Everybody wanting to go? I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and transform into a griffin as well. Oh, of course you will. <laughs> Why well, ride when you can be one, right? Gonna... That's right. I'm, I think I'm... Can I can I ride you, Usul? I don't trust these wild ones. <laughs> Usul is Not a pretty good griffin. Get that question. T so sorry, but jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Had a question. I, so, I asked still Usul if um if I could ride him rather than those ones because last time I was up high up in the air I fell and hit the ground. Can I, can I write a fan you fiction remember? about it? <laughs> Erotic fan fiction. Oh well, yeah, that's only kind. <laughs> I'm wondering about uh, Meriden. You're wondering about Meriden? Uh, yes, I don't see him on the screen. Oh crap! Oh sorry, I didn't know Meriden was here. Meriden, you there he on is. Discord? I am, uh, but um, I, I was, I, I was assuming that uh, I would get on later on the history, so I, I was like letting you guys talk. Ah, <laughs> okay, I apologize. Okay, so we're going to kind of do a little quick theory of the mind here. So Meriden is a, a new guy, new intern, uh, also known as Doug, I think, or Douglas. Uh, he's going to be playing the role of Meriden tonight, and for the course of the story, I'm going to assume that Meriden has been with you guys the whole time. So that actually works out well, so if you're going to change into a, a Griffin, because now you actually have enough people to possibly carry uh, Meriden as well. So give me a second, I'm going to drop Meriden in here. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think the only one of this group that has been that has played with Meriden in the past is Didamar. Is that correct? 
I believe. And I I did as well, but not technically my character that I'm playing. Yeah, right that now. was during that one-off session. So uh, again, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna roleplay this this to the, the point where this is where Didemeyer and Meriden showed up at the same time, and they basically joined the same guy, Meriden and and Didemeyer on this same oh, okay. task of trying to locate this uh, uh, Hatterai guy, part of the No Mercy Guild, and the fact that uh, some of the trappers and uh, fishermen have gone missing as well. I think that's what I explained to you guys. Is that correct? Okay, so okay. let me go grab Meriden. Did yeah. I make sure I gave him access to this one? Do -do -do. Yeah, you gave me. Okay. All right, so I'm going to drop you in here. I'm kind of newbie in whole 20, so... It's okay, we'll kind of walk you through it. All right. You All right. can ride the Thank griffin you. with me. Usul, okay. do you have access to uh, your own griffin? Did I ever give you access to it? Do I need to pull that out for you? Um, I, yeah, you'll have to pull it out. I, I don't see my icon anywhere. Okay. One second. Well, what, what do you think I should go? I'm sorry? Um, go to a fourth Griffin, right over here. Okay. Right here. Okay. See, and, and I talked to, um, I talked to Meridan. Is that your name? Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Meridan, uh. I just don't. I, I mean, I just don't trust this this Didemeyer guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I trust you, you with my life. Hey, you're fine with the caster. But... <laughs> you should have trust him. He is a uh, he, he's kind strange. of different guy. His eyes yeah, are glowing, he's... and he's like talking in his sleep to like some kind of weird hand thing that was touching his face. I don't know. It was really weird. <laughs> yeah, he 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 talks to angels too, right? And he's not eating the nuts that I found. I mean, he won't eat my nuts. <laughs> Good reason for that. What? Did the man, I think you're not the same person I met before. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm the same. I think, oh. I'll say, Agathor is, 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 um, well, let's just say he's been here for a while. Dirk died, and then this weird guy just came out of nowhere. And <laughs> he I just... dies. <laughs> we both did. Dirk's, Dirk, you don't know if Dirk's dead, he's just missing. I know, I just, I'm just sad. I'm a 90-year-old oh. man. I just looked at his age. <laughs> I, I think, I, I believe I, I must thank you for saving my, my life in the past. But yes. don't count to, to I save your life if you don't give some money. Uh, um, uh, okay. <laughs> Where's Sissel live? Diddy's wondering if madness can spread. <laughs> you you haven't met me yet. Well, that's not fair. Yeah, I think don't. you should be in the game by now. I think it can. Yeah, I wait think so for too. it. Wait for it. Wait, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> He's gonna be, if not, I have a card for that. He's going to kill you again. <laughs> All right, so I'm assuming everybody's on here, on at least two people per... Uh, for uh, Griffin yeah. here, for the most part. I'll get Beacon to come on to my one. Come on over, over here, buddy. Beacon would run around like a chicken with his head cut off a few more times. He's going to run back inside, and he comes back out, and he's got the, these makeshift, like, little lasso ropes, and he hands each one of them to the guys that are on the Griffins. He says, you may want these. Wrap these around the necks. Hold on tight. And you see him kind of put his hand onto each one of the Griffins' beaks again and takes a couple seconds where looks like he's you know maybe communicating with them a little bit. He's casting a spell, I say, and whispered. <laughs> I'll say to Beekwim, have you got enough uh, equipment to come and or are you going to, don't forget to go and pick something up. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are all on board. You're all on yeah. Griffins. Uh, no one's riding on Usul? I thought Baron was. I, I do want to, because, um, you know, the last time I was picked up and flown around was by those gargoyles, and I fell a long damn way. And broke a few bones, so I trust Uso a little more than a wild griffin. So when Beacon comes back out, I don't know if you change into a, a griffin, Uso, while he was inside or out. I'll let you make that call. We were all outside. Okay, so he would have seen you transform into it. Right? I'm assuming. He's going to walk up to you, and he'll place a hand onto uh, your beak as well. And you'll hear him kind of speak into your, to your, to your, uh, your mind. He says, that's, that's a very fine trick you've got there. I'm uh, glad you're, uh, you're here to help. I mean, let's go of your beak. And hops back on to his, uh, his other uh, griffin over here. Alright, so now I need to grab all you guys. And we're going to move Mush. 
to a different map here. <laughs> and hopefully I've got all this set up right, because I had no zero prep today. Just keep your eye out on, on uh, Didemire and Mirandin. Mirandin. Just keep your eye out. He's my out. friend! <laughs> what? I'm his right. friend also! He said that we, guys, we knew him. Can you guys see the map? I'm gonna make sure I don't have Fog of War on. Yep. It's called what? Roll With It, okay? Yeah, I can yes. see the map. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So the uh, Griffins are going here. to... The time. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was, I was going to respond here. I was here all the time. Why don't you trust me? No, I trust yeah. you! It's just that this guy, Didemeyer, just came out of nowhere right after Dirk died. So, <laughs> so did Dirk's so not this dead! <laughs> oh, Dirk's alive? Yeah. How do you know that? You don't know that he's dead. <laughs> well, but you don't know he's alive. We can just hope. He only we can got hope and pray. I can remember that dragon. guy. He just freaking one... learn scrying. Right, anyways. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the griffins are going to circle along the outside of the uh, uh, the forest here, and they'll drop down right at the edge of the forest uh, where they can't get into. At this point, a little bit of fear of the mind, this forest doesn't look that thick, but it's too thick for them to, them to safely kind of fly through. So they'll drop you down right here on the edge uh, of the forest here, and Beacon will kind of, you know, he's got one hand on him. He's okay, he said they, he last saw them fly, fleeing in here, but it's, it's been several hours since they last saw them in there. So, I, I, he hops off, says, all right, guys, so, I, I don't know what we're running into. It's probably just a couple little minor little thieves and bandits and who knows what trappers, but uh, let's, let's go. And he'll kind of lead us, himself over here. Who wants to take lead, take charge, looking for a marching order here? Uh, new soul, uh, the Griffin's uh, uh, going in with us. Nope. Is who going in with you? The uh, Griffins are they? Uh, no, it's are, it's too dense in here for them to get to okay, safely fly so around. Okay, so have to revert. You can, but it would be like being in a tight space. You have like disadvantage on almost everything. And okay. you'd be walking, not flying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably so. Okay. All right, so I'll leave the griffin here just in case you decide to change back again, but for now I'll leave him down here on the bottom side here. All I'm looking for is a marching order. Who's in front? Who's in back? Where are you guys going? I'll stay on the back. <laughs> I'm happy to go in the front. <laughs> um, I'll be in the front. Uh, I'll be not in the back, but behind. Okay, go ahead and place yourself wherever you're going to be at. Are we trying to be? Are we trying to be sneaky, or are we just charging on in? We should probably the door hurry. Or I mean, they're probably going to eat the eggs or sell them. <laughs> yeah, I think we just go in. I go over to the griffin that carried me, and I, and I like, I pet him or whatever, and I say, Thank you so much, Majestic Beast. And I, I do a big bow. <laughs> and I go on with you guys. Bert kind of tilts, oh, tilts his head at like 45 Maybe. degrees, giving you a stranger look, and then tilts the other 45 degrees. <laughs> oh, it's like the dog thing, like, you know, when they tilt their heads, like, when they're happy or listening. <laughs> Diddy just looks at him and shakes his head and just goes into the fart. <laughs> hey, Brian? Yeah? I'm going to throw out a couple of my um, bag of tricks out to the front and, and tell them to scout. Okay. Do you have access to do that, right? Or do you need me to do that for you? Uh, I got a... A baboon and a black bear. Okay, they're getting. You need me to drop them for you, or can, you, you have access to do that? I, I, if I do have access, I don't know how to do it. If you look under characters, there should be a section called beast forms. Yep. And inside, in there, I got a bunch of usul, the whatever. Hopefully, I've got uh, those animals you just said. You should be able to drag those right into the desktop. Is that not the case? Okay, there's a polar bear, which we can use as a bear. Um, <laughs> baboon. A uh, polar bear and a black bear, I think, are different stats, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, let me just, grab Absolutely, a... just for tokens, though, I can... Well, I'll I've got give an you... ape and a... Give me a, a second. A... I'll, I'll give you a black bear. I got one in here as my 
other section that you don't have access to, so hold on one second. Uh, there he is. Not quite as big either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the other one's a baboon. Okay, yeah, you... Oh, you don't have a baboon either. I'm just awesome for you, aren't I? I got everything prepared for you. Uh, baboon. The big ugly baboon. Uh, let me give you access to him, because right now I don't think you do. do, do, do. Okay. You should now have the baboon, at least a token. I'm also going to go in and give you access to their character sheets in one second. I think at one point I'm probably going to have a bunch of enemies in here that you have control of and you see. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to keep changing into all kinds of stuff or using them, but that's fine. <laughs> so if I see you guys fighting one of these and one of them does something I didn't do, you're going to get the wrath of the DM here. Alright, so you should have access to both their tokens and their character sheets. Okay. Okay. Um, so what is your... You send them out ahead? And is Didamar, are you letting these beasts run out in front of you with no problem? Yeah, no problem. I mean, I'll try and chase with them, so wherever they go, I'll come up behind them. So if there's been any trappers laying traps, I'll follow in their tracks type of deal. Okay, so Usul, what is uh, your instructions to these guys? Uh, just go out forward and, and scout ahead. So are they being sneaky? Or are they just running full bore and looking for tracks? I mean, what do you mean by looking, scouting ahead? Um, well, uh, scouting, I... They should be going fairly uh, stealthily. Okay. So they're trying to be not be noticed by anybody, but also looking for tracks, is what I'm hearing, correct? Correct, yep. Okay. All right, so they're going to have half their movement, since they're moving stealthy. And I need you to make me stealth checks and uh, perception checks if they're looking for tracks. Sorry, that was strength, not stealth. <laughs> The other S word. <laughs> uh, shoot, where is the stealth on the bear? I think it's dexterity on a on a. NPC. Yeah, they may not have stealth. If not, just use, just do a straight up dex then. No, Damn. Black bear. Sneaky bear. Holy shit, that black bear is sneaky. Yogi yeah, bear, no pick one. a basket. It's how it's going. <laughs> You're doing it for both of them, right? I, I'm trying here. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave oh, it up to the baboon. baboon. <laughs> Baboon's got a 14 dex and the bear has 10. <laughs> <laughs> baboon falls out of the tree, smacks him to the ground. <laughs> Fuck! Okay, and what was the other roll you wanted me to make? Uh, a perception or survival if they've got it. Sorry. It's probably wisdom if they don't have it. Right. Oh, I... oh wow. That, you probably need to roll off the other one. That's pretty good. So, how does your link work with these guys? They don't have, like, a, a mental link with you, right? That's correct. They are okay. separate entities, and uh, all, all they can do is just kind of... Uh, they can come back and kind of pantomime the what's going on. Okay. All right, so, as they scout out ahead, um, the black bear is going to... I'm just going to role play for him, if you don't mind, for that. So I'm assuming they're going to go like 30, 40 feet out in front, both trying to stick to the trees a little bit. The baboon kind of climbs up the trees. The black bear stays on the bottom. And uh, the black bear will move out a little bit further ahead. Nope, stay back for right now, A4th, because I've got the, uh, the other animals out front right now, unless you were sending your owl too, which I'm oh, assuming yeah, you were going to. Oh, yeah, I my owl. Right. I forgot about that. 
So you can move him up there close to him as well. The black bear is already kind of past all, all this shit here, so I'm going to roll a play with that. So the bear will make it up quite this far. Uh, Anthony, I need you to yep. knock your hit points down to half and your magic pool points down to half. Oh, uh, taking damage. Okay. Sure. All right, so the bear is going to run up here by, by the tree. You can barely see him, Didamar. And then he's going to turn back around and kind of stay to the trees and, and work himself back up here again, going towards uh, Usul. And he's going to start making his way towards you, Usul. And then Didamar, make me a perception check. And you're and eight fourth, your owl. Does it have a mind link with you? Uh, yeah, I can do it. Tell, uh, tell, uh, whatever telepathy or something with it. Okay, but you can't like see through its eyes or anything. Oh yeah, correct? I can use an action to see through its eyes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I now that I, now that I've given, put the cat out of the bag, are you gonna do that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, no need for perception check. You're gonna see these two characters running uh, straight in the direction of the owl, the baboon, and the rest of the party up here. Oh, occasionally, okay. look, occasionally looking over their shoulders back behind them. I, I tell the rest of the party that um, there's a dragon guy and a and a human with a with a ugly mustache, and um, <laughs> he's, they're coming, they're running here, and they're looking behind them. I think some is chasing them. You'll see one of them is, is about half the size of a normal human. Yeah, he's uh, the like other about one... half the size of a normal human. <laughs> and the other one's a real thin-looking like lizard running upright. A thin lizard running upright. Is that fair, Anthony? With, with the, he looks like Jesus. He looks like Jesus. I don't know who that is, but <laughs> it's, it's he looks like a priest there. A cleric. Looks like a priest, a cleric. A lizard in robes. A lizard in robes. Okay, let's go, guys. All right. So Anthony pretty much keep pace with uh, with the other guy here, but you guys are you guys know each other, Anthony? I think we talked about this. Yep. And these two guys are running up here. They see the group approaching, and, they, and this guy at least stop and kind of look panting and frantic and looking back over his shoulder. So he's running, screaming? Uh, not screaming, but uh, he's running back and just keep looking over his shoulder and trying to be quiet. Uh, Anthony, I, I think I explained to you what happened to you guys. Did I not? Uh, no, you didn't. You explained what we're doing, but not what happened. Okay. All right. That's cool. All right, so I'll let uh, <laughs> Renault kind of uh, tell the story of what happened here if they don't attack him. <laughs> What's going on here? And I hold the lightning bolt ready. Oh, everyone hold the hell up. That's Renault. What the fuck are you doing here, dude? <laughs> Renault? He looks, he looks over at you, Corey. He's like, it's like, holy shit. What are you guys doing? He says, we can't stay here. We we got to go. There, there's, there, we, we just got to go. And you see, <laughs> Corey, you're going to know us right away. He's got open wounds on him and the, the dragon... Uh, born looking next to him. They both got some open wounds on them where looks like they've been in some kind of a fight recently. Well, you heard him. Let's get the hell out of here. I trust this man. Let's go. Oh. I used to travel with him. Where are the griffin eggs? <gasps> Did you guys take the griffin eggs? He's like, like it, and you see the both of them kind of look at each other. And I, again, I don't know if I explained this to you, Anthony, or not, but let's let's roll with this. With, so let's with, get, uh, hold, hold on. Okay. Maybe? You guys took the griffin eggs? Can I, can I make any sight? Yeah, insight's fine. I please, please fail. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Alright, Marion, yes. you, you, you believe him 100%. Okay. <laughs> 8-4th, you think there's something fishy in his story there. Oh, okay. Tell me the truth, I got a fireball ready. <laughs> Renault's going to kind of cower back and says, Hold on, guys, hold on. Jeez. Where are the eggs? Where are the, where are the other drugs going? Where? The, I'm sorry? Silith? Oh, so where sorry. Are drugs going? <laughs> where are the other drugs going? You have drugs? <laughs> <sighs> and, uh, I mean, uh, Thornault's gonna walk up to Corn and says, Corn, Corn, tell these guys to freaking calm down, alright? Just tell them to calm down, we'll explain. Alright, yeah, everyone everyone just needs to take a chill pill and uh, just relax, put the fireball away or whatever you're about to cast. I believe Corin, so I put the fireball away. So what's going on then, Corin? I don't know, but what did you guys do? What's chasing you? 
All right, so this Anthony, this is going to be knowledge you know as well. So I'm going to kind of just paraphrase what's going on here. So Renault and uh, uh, Silith, am I saying that right? Silith, yep. Silith. They'll uh, they'll quickly kind of rumble through a story about how uh, they were helping these guys uh, uh, cultivate is what they use some uh, some griffin eggs, and uh, they they were ambushed by these freaking. Uh, some kind of weird, strange wolves. I mean, they were—they weren't—I don't know—they weren't normal wolves. They like had ice for eyes, and they—they they seemed to breathe this this very cold breath that kind of seemed to emanate from their their bodies itself. And uh, the rest of their the guys they were traveling with are all—they think they're all dead. The only reason these guys got away is because, correct me if I'm wrong, Silas. I know how Renault got away. Renault is able to kind of do a missy step blink thing and then he cast invisibility on himself and he's been running ever since so however you try to match that to get away I'll leave that up to you as well Silith so a weird ice wolf was eating you well, it was, it was, no it, was, it came at us it was trying to I mean holy crap look, look at my arms and he kind of shows these big gashes on his arms I have no idea where they are. They could still be behind us. They could still be tracking us. I don't know. Well, you guys should heal up. I mean, do you have potions? Can we I... hear, like, howling in the distance or something? Before uh... they heal, let's get Biku up here. Yeah. Oh, Biku! Oh, <laughs> Biquim! Biku, yeah. So the name's no, Biku, no, damn no. it. Not Biku. Hey, Biku only here? one letter off from the alphabet. Oh, there he is. I see him. And Biko's so gonna. So go ahead. Uh, so I did. He's gonna lay hands on the uh, the dragon guy and do five hit points of healing. Just so right, go ahead and heal yourself, there, Silla. Done or no? Didn't go through. Hold on. Uh, yeah, there's five points, buddy. There we go. Yeah, yeah. All right, Beacom is going to run up to uh, Renault and punch him in the face. <laughs> so Whoa, God damn you! These freaking, these freaking monster! They're just freaking eggs. So you see him so sitting on sort of top of him. Slowly edge behind Didymeyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's upset about the eggs. I say. Yeah, he's, give uh, him back the eggs. So Beacom's on top of him, kind of punching Renault. It's like, no, no, I don't have the eggs. I don't have them. I don't have them. There's. As far as, far as eggs, I know, how <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost it. Listen, Beekwim, calm down, all right. Renault's, uh he might have made a bad mistake, but I mean, he's a good guy. He was probably down on his luck and just trying to make coin or best he could or something. I don't know. I know he's a good man. It sounds fair. And you guys are so trusting. I don't trust him. I think we I'm should take him from the tray. Yeah, I, like I mean, I trust Warren. I so trust Sir says, Demire because he has glowing eyes. And I, I don't Renault. trust that. That freaks me out. I trust Renault because I've met him before. Yeah, I, I believe Warren though, so... So Beacon is going to continue to kind of sit on top of Renault and keep kind of punching him. Doesn't look like he's really doing anything hard, but he's definitely kind of pissed off and just kind of to continue to wail on him. Renault's just kind of sitting there trying to cover up. <laughs> Good. Okay. Give it like, to him. Guys, 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 we've got the... Yeah, I'm like trying coming. to get Beacom off him. I'm like, alright, Beacom, like, enough, man. Mistake's mistake. He didn't even get what he wanted. So as you kind of pull Beacom, he's a lot smaller, so he's kind of easy to kind of pick up. Plus, you're like Neo, so you can probably grab hold of anything he tries to strike him with. And as you pull him off, you see him kind of start leaning towards uh, the Dragonborn over there as well. And you! You were a part of this too, weren't you? So it's like me? No, we were stealing eggs. We were liberating eggs that were lost. Inside check. Inside <laughs> <laughs> too. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I do. Uh, <laughs> I don't do it. All right, so you being uh, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In some social circles, that might be called stealing. Wait, so, so you, what get, the, you get this? You get this? You get the sense they for it that. He's he's not exactly lying. I mean, he, he really truly does believe that it was a good thing he was doing. But your understanding of it is that maybe he was duped out of it. You know, you're not quite believing it. But 
he seemed to be sincere in what he was saying. I believe yeah, so much right now. spells, fuck this. Okay, I'm gonna shoot a fireball at him. <laughs> I believe so much, I like jump in front of the fireball. I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you taking the eggs that Beakbomb wants for the griffins? Alright, stop. Um, stop. Didamar? Yeah. Give me a percep give me a perception. Yeah, I'm just watching out for these wolves because I'm thinking uh, 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 this is probably uh, perception. Yeah, so I'm not worrying about I know they're having an argument which they normally do. <laughs> I'll take my sword out as well, because I'm just sort of looking around waiting for these wolves. Holy crap. Hold on. All right, there we go. Okay, so I need uh, everybody to roll per initiative. <laughs> Did matter, as you get closer, you can see what appears to be two tents with uh, blood splattered all around the center of it, and maybe some drag marks hitting uh, north away from you here. Yeah, okay. And amongst the tents, you can see these large-looking wolf creatures starting to kind of come out from around the edges. Okay. And you can see four of them kind of... I got four of them there? How many do I got there? One, two, three, four. Now, you can see four of them <laughs> coming your, your way. And growling and snaring, and their eyes are kind of glowing like a... Almost like a snow white. Yeah. I'll, I'll look at the guys, and uh, that potion that we got the, from the cold, I might chug that right now. <laughs> I, and I'll, I'll say to the guys, uh, stop arguing. We've got visitors. Crap. I love sword. awesome initiative. Do, 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 do. And I'll just sort of back up to here and take my potion. So. Hey Brian, you're missing Usul. I'm missing Usul? Usul, did you roll? Did he roll the 20? Yeah, he did rolled. Did you it. click on your icon first? He got the best. Uh, probably not. Okay, that's fine. I can fix it. Hold on a second. Alright, so where are you at, Susu? There you are. Those are some crazy looking wolves. I don't wolves. see either. Hey, Brian. You don't have the grids yeah. on anymore? Yeah, I turned the grid off because I got tired of trying to fit people into exact spots, so that's fine. That's good. Alright, so why did these guys not get their numbers in there? Do you know if it's something I did or not? I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Can everyone see the blue circle around me? Nope. No. no. I can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. That's, that's, oh, there you go. It's just the aura protection I've got, so if you're within there, it's you, your aura, you, yeah. you get better saves. Oh, right, gee, that... are you a paladin? Aren't you a yes. goody goody two shoes? That's, <laughs> that's it. I, I took right. the exact same build. Right, hold on, guys. I'm going to walk Meriden through this. Meriden, for your initiative, I think if you click on your... Do I have your icon in here? I do, don't I? He's got I it. 15. Yeah. I can, if you, you click on your token... I can delete it. Click... I can delete it. You deleted 15. it? Yeah, you rolled I did. it at 15. Oh, okay. Yeah, Just in, in the future, when you when you click on it, make sure you click on your token first, and then roll initiative. Then it'll automatically add it to the order. If you roll, if you click on initiative without clicking on your, your token, it won't add it to the initiative here. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I right. should do it again. No, no I'll, I got you. I'll take care of you. Okay. All right. So at this point. Didamar will see them coming up there. I'm assuming Corn will probably see them as well. Meriden, maybe. But uh, Didamar does not see all of them. So, surprise round. Two of them come rushing out of the woods to the side here. Mm -hmm. And they are both jumping onto Didamar here. Oh. So, second, i got to pull up my character sheets. I did manage to drink the po the cold potion though. Before. You did what? Uh, did I did I manage to drink that potion? It's resistant to cold. Did you frozen. take it before I said roll initiative? Yeah, you did. I did. Yeah, I said that was the first thing I was going to do. Before I, before you even walked out there, you did. Oh no 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 no! I I saw the three creatures and I drank it. So. Okay. Then. No, because this is a surprise round. Because oh, okay. these two, these two, you did not see. That's why I had you roll that perception check. So these oh, two would have attacked before before you've done that. 
Yeah, so I, I got to pull up the character sheets and make sure I'm doing this right. Because I didn't get time to prepare. I'm a crappy DM. There we go. Terrible. These guys Fired. get... <laughs> I was going to say, oh no, I don't get any dexterity. And then I thought, oh. <laughs> what's, your, what's your AC? 20? Uh, 18. Oh, you don't have the shield I had. Mm, no. Actually, hold on. Um, didn't I read someone picked up the shield I was carrying before? Yeah, Fuha has it. Oh, Fuha. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, My so... only remaining fourth companion. <laughs> so I'm assuming that... Yeah, those don't hit. And... Nope, those don't hit, because you're like a plate-wearing bastard, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. I just look at these wolves and I go, Ooh, that must have hurt your teeth, boys. Sorry about that. All right, so both of those kind of leap at you with their, with their uh, bites and trying to sink into you, yeah, but yeah. Uh, they don't find their mark. Now we're in the initiative order. Usul. Okay. I'm uh, going to use up my creatures first. Uh, so um, they are each one at the... They can both make it to the uh, uh, rightmost wolf. Okay. This is your baboon. You have control over his character sheet, so you should be able to roll whatever you need for him. Okay, and my attack. Woohoo! And now my black bear. <laughs> Same one, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, that All one right, hit. So, Alright, so that first one hits. Chomps down this guy. You don't see blood coming out. It's almost like it's a white ooze that comes... Uh, well, actually, you wouldn't see that. Didymar would see it, though. He's got okay. two attacks, so go and do your second one. Alright. Uh, he tries a second time with his claws. You see the, the bite kind of got his attention. You see the wolf kind of rear up at the last second as the bear comes climbing down with his claws and doesn't find its mark. Just barely misses him. All right. And I'm going to move move up a little bit. I am pretty squishy, so uh, I'll just move up to there. And that'll All right. do. All right. The owl, I'm going to rule that uh, he moves on the same initiative as you. Um, Abe Forth. Oh, okay. okay. Or, or is that your initiative? No, that's my Al's initiative. Okay. Yeah, the Al's gonna move in the same initiative as you. You okay with that? Okay. Okay. All right, Meriden. You can pretty much see one, two, three. Probably see most of the wolves approaching at this point, but you definitely see the two that kind of jumped out of the side and were attacking uh, Didamar. Okay, uh, I will move forward. Uh, how much I can move forward? I don't know. 30 feet. No, I right. know, but I don't know how to do it. There's a little oh. ruler on the top left side of your screen. There's like an arrow, a paintbrush. Um, you can click the ruler, and it allows you to measure distances. I don't think you'll be able to like, get in range of them. You might be able to get the left one. Yeah, you can get the left one, get I think. Get to the left one. If you're going to try some kind of ranged weapon, they're going to have uh, partial cover standing. Yeah, if you just if you can go about uh, there. A bit more hit, than some, but okay. hit the cursor, you can just like click on your yeah, token okay. and just move okay, yourself okay. up there. Yeah. So, Don't do it. Like if you if you're currently moving your token, you can just hit your space bar and you can measure. Okay. That's it's a faster way of doing it. Okay. Uh, so now I want to. Uh, I was thinking on cast slow, but it's only two cast creatures. Uh, I most likely will. No, I will mirror image. You're gonna mirror image yourself? Yeah. 
Okay, and that gives you, I think, a, a attacks on you have disadvantage, correct? No, it creates three illusory duplicates of yourself uh, that appear in the space next to me. Uh, until the spell ends, the duplicates move with me and mimic my actions. As shifting positions, so it's impossible to track which unit is real. You can use uh, your action to dismiss the illusory duplicates. Each time a creature targets you with an attack uh, during the spell duration, hold the D20 to determine whether the attack stats targets on a per duplicates. If you have three duplicates, you must go a six or higher. Yeah. yeah, you know how it works. Okay, yeah, I'm reading it now, so probably have to remind me when, when they start attacking you again. So that's fine. Okay, make sure you okay. keep track of your uh, your magic pool points by casting that. Okay, okay. they are three. I think it's level level two. So I I, I spend two. Yep. I'm just going to copy two more of your uh, tokens in here just for placement. So the rest of you see this guy kind of walking up here. I don't know if he walked. I guess he walked. He didn't run. Walks up here and then kind of splits. Is it two or three of them? How many am I supposed to have there? Three. Three, three, three total? Yes. Okay, so two duplicates just kind of like plop yeah, out do, from his existence right one. next to him. Two. Have more one. One more? Yeah, it's, yes, it's yes, three yes. duplicates aside from himself, so there's four in total. I taught him that spell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I don't know if I can take that. Let me see something here. Uh, uh, no. Well, okay, you use your I'll, movement and action. Uh, yeah, uh, I could have a bonus action, but I don't think I have one. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I could have a bonus action, but I don't think I have one. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's that it, that's all. Okay. All right, Silith. So Silith will be like, oh man, oh man, oh jeez, what did we do to deserve this? And he's you gonna stole go, eggs. I didn't steal. I didn't know yes, I was did. stealing. I didn't know I was stealing. You didn't know you were stealing. And <laughs> so it's gonna move over here. And he's gonna. He's he's mad at the, these guys here for kind of nibbling on his arm. So he's gonna fire breath, and it's uh yeah thirty feet long and five feet wide. So it's about there, and it'd be about there to there just. You know, warming up Denemeyer and the, the animals. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. So, <laughs> don't burn down the forest. <laughs> that's <laughs> save for all those guys. Funny, because I know what I'm doing. Diddy <laughs> Did looks, looks up to the skies and goes, Lathander, I know you just sent that guy to test me. <laughs> <laughs> well, i got to read something real quick. I thought he sent me to test. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're talking about pistol. No, no, it's, it's really it's just all a big test. <laughs> all right, um, Usul, I want you to roll me a uh, one deck save with advantage. Okay. Use either the, your your baboon or the bear. I don't care which one. Oh, okay. Deck save. That monkey is just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your your monkey also took this uh, this damage as well. Oh. So, so I think that's uh, it for the monkey, right? Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three hit points. Three hit points. Oh no. This is the one that fell out of the tree, poor thing. This left? <laughs> I don't know your name. <laughs> so it's just uh, like you win some, you lose some. Red yeah. dragon yeah. thing. <laughs> so a blast of fire comes out of his mouth and kind of goes right across the the backs of both of these uh, uh, these wolves. You don't see them sizzle or like they're catching on fire, but you do see almost like their 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 skin or their fur is like melting away in certain spots. And so it's gonna be like retreat. No, we'll be alright. 
And so, if you de you definitely recognize these guys. These are the same ones that were attacking you and the rest of your party whenever you decided to turn tail and run. Yeah. Alright, Baron. Okay, um... Uh, ooh, um... Well, I'm as far away from the front line as I could be, so let's start running that way. I guess. Uh... uh you gonna run? 30. Or you... <laughs> no, I'm not gonna run. I'm not gonna run. I'm gonna throw wolves. So if you I'll throw, throw something yeah. at them. They're, go they're gonna have partial cover. Yeah, that's okay. I'll throw yeah, gonna, two axes. Throw to the mire. I'm okay with this. That's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm throwing it at the one that the bear is fighting. Okay, that's it. Oh, you son oh, of a bitch! That's pretty good. <laughs> ah, you son of a bitch! Twice. <laughs> so both of your axes find their mark. Oh, look at you. And uh, your first axe hits it, square right in the shoulder, and you hear a little yelp, and as it's rearing up, kind of you know, rearing back from that hit, you hit a second time, right square right in its sternum. You see it kind of fall down backwards, and kind of, you see little be bits and pieces of, like, ice just kind of shatter off of its body as it hits the ground dead. Ah. <laughs> Is that yeah, it that's... for your turn? Okay. Corn. All right. Um, this one up here is dead, right? Yep. Baron. Okay, I'll come down to the one that's still alive. He's speaking, but I can't hear him. You can't hear him. You can't hear Corn. Oh. You hear? I hear you. Um, I can hear you now. Um. And no, I can hear you, Corn. Go ahead. Just uh, I can I'll hear just you. Whale on it. Oh. <laughs> oh Alright, so shit. So one, two, three strikes. Okay, the first one you see like uh it's almost like Call of Guard, but it's it's uh it's friend falling down there and the last second it looks up at you as you're swinging out with your first punch and it kinda ducks down, just barely missing, like you just nip his ear. And as you nip his ear you feel like it's it's not fur, it's almost like his as icicles on it, but you are in the winter, so it didn't seem that odd to you. But your next one, yeah, it lands its its punch. Finds its mark solely right square in its jaw. That was 14. And your last one does another 9. Yep. And your last one kind of, as it kind of falls back with its few teeth flying off behind it, come around with your last hit's going to be a punch or a kick? What would you say, Corn? Kick it right in the head. Right, whoop, I marked the wrong one. Go ahead and describe how you uh, just kind of took care of this one, Corn. Alright, well, I just bat it a few times, and then uh, I finish it off with, like, a punning kick right in its jaw. So it tumbles, uh, like, back over her end <laughs> as it dies. And there again, just like the other one, as it falls to the ground, where you expect to see, like, blood or bruises and stuff, you don't see any of that, but it seems like part of its body is kind of shattered. Almost like ice. Anything else, Corn? Is there any, like, blood or anything? Like... You don't see any blood. Alright. Uh, that's it for me. Alright, Abe Forth. Fireball, the last three over here. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to do that. <laughs> I'm already a fireball. I'm already a fireball. This time I'm going to throw it. <laughs> Alright, Nick says... Oh, Woo! Damn, what level did you cast that at? Damn, that's some um, good damage. Fourth level? Holy crap, that was a lot of sixes and fives. Yeah, What's the radius? Uh, um, let me double I mean, Radius, so that guy, if you center it there, radius. you get, yeah. You so, center it right here? Well, Let's I just want to make sure I hit these three. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you'll definitely hit those three. I'm trying to see if you can, by chance, I gotta zoom in so I can see my freaking arrow. Do, do, do. Can't hit them all. All right, but he wanted those three. He can definitely get those three. Uh huh. All right, so so three more deck saves. Here's my. He could get he could get any th the two in the top and one on either side really. Oh crap! Did I close this freaking character sheet? I hate when I do that. Oh, there they are. I'm looking uh. at you, Celeste. Well, as I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. That's one. 
Okay. <laughs> That's a failure. So that's two failures. Alright, so I'm gonna roll this guy passes. Whoops, get back to my clicker. This guy passes, the other two fail. So that's thir forty-one total. Mm -hmm. Okay. So forty-one total on these two. This guy explodes in a big burst of flame and ice. A song of fire and ice is what these two are. This guy takes half damage. I'm I'm Daenerys, bitch. <laughs> 41 after that's <laughs> oh, missed of and as well, you do that to a dragon but eh. one second let me add some other stuff into here hold on one second I too was thinking about turning myself into a dragon except not really you can turn into a dragon too no of course I can't oh. <laughs> all I do is axe things I'm oh, good at asking lot. questions. Stop asking questions. Yeah. You know, do you want to <laughs> die today? Yes, okay. Alright, so as you... you a question. <laughs> Alright, as you blast these guys, again, you don't see anything smoldering, but you see part of them like kind of melt away, but you do notice that these two tents are, are now on fire. <clears throat> Alright, that's my turn. Okay. Oh wait, right. my owl. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> have my owl go over here. If he had the dash, that's fine. He'll just sit in that tree up there, like high in the tree. Uh, click again where you sent him to. I didn't see where you clicked. Uh, right over here. Ah, okay. All right. Go, Cornelius. He's like camouflaged. I can barely even see him there. Yeah. <laughs> He's a snow okay. owl. Snowy trees. So now we've got. Where did I put those guys? Oh yeah, they're over here. Crawling out from underneath this tree, you guys didn't see before, are two guys, that, two men, you think they're men? They're kind of covered in ice, and looks like they got frozen blood uh, around their necks and their arms, but they're kind of slowly kind of lumbering towards you guys. Let me see how far away they are. Do, 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 do. Well, they just happen to be all confused by this. All right, so just so we're clear, Mer Meriden, this one right here is the real one, right? And when I approach, I roll a d20, and then they figure out who, how that attacks them. I gotta scroll back up to look at your. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, he, I, he rolls. He rolls the d20, and it oh, he does. Decide okay. by that. Yeah, yeah. I must hold six or higher if I have uh, three duplicates, eight or higher if I have two, and eleven or higher if I have uh, only one. Only one. Uh, okay. look at, uh, uh, they have uh, they have a AC, so uh, it's uh, ten plus my de dexterity modifier. So you have to beat their AC to hit ten. Have to beat what? Ten plus my dexterity modifier, which is yeah. What's two. the number? Uh, twelve. Twelve. Okay, have to be a twelve perception check. Yeah. No, no. To to no, hit, hit them when when you uh, target a uh, duplicate to hit. To hit it, you must uh, beat uh, 12 AC. Must be 12 AC. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm rolling attack like normal for these guys. Okay. Okay. Let me find their sheet. I taught him that spell. as <laughs> 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 well. It, it's a very good spell. It's a very right, so spell. spell. These two are going to approach, and we'll see what happens. I got to look up the sheet. How many attacks do they get? Oh yeah, okay. Do 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 do. So uh, actually, a quick thing okay. on that. So I have to roll to see oh. if you. Uh, yeah. So whenever you're whenever you're going to attack him, he has to roll a for a d20. Is it? Yes. Yeah, and and, and, and he has to roll eight or higher. Yeah. Yeah. So I did the attack. There goes one image. Six higher. Six higher. So, yeah, there goes one image. Yeah, one image goes bye bye. Yeah. So I need to get AC higher than that. What you're saying? No, no, no. Um, you're higher than twelve. Higher than twelve, and the the duplicate's gone. So what it is is when you when you declare the attack, he has to roll higher than six, 
8 or 11, depending on how many duplicates he has, and it redirects the attack to his duplicate if he beats that check. Ah. If you, otherwise, it hits him directly. Me. Okay. Uh, hits me. Okay. So the first one, this one right here, walks up and swings once. And he rolls that, that 13 there. And if that hits, or whatever, your duplicate for uh, seven or seven or seven damage. And then he swings a second time, and that's when he gets to 22. Yeah, for five damage. That time. It's dead, though. So, this one disappeared, I guess, right? But this one hit, and now you, the, the jig is up, correct? Uh, the second one would have hit him directly. Right, so this other guy hasn't attacked yet. Yeah. So oh, now he'll, he... still, he'll, he'll still have to so fight the duplicates because they move so how fast. Much you did uh, 13 only because of the, the 22. So it was uh, 13? No, 22 five was to hit 5 damage. 5 damage, okay. Yep. Yeah, this, the second roll is uh, if you're rolling advantage. Right. Or disadvantage. Yeah, so, so the way that it works is those duplicates will still keep getting in the way even though you that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not concentration, so it doesn't have to roll concentration checks if they do hit him, so... Mm. Yeah. Okay. But now right. I have to hold uh, 8 yeah. to make you... So his roll goes up, it gets higher and higher to get the duplicate. Alright, so the second one's going to take his first swing with his long sword. Yeah. And he rolls a 9. I'm assuming so that misses. It, it, it misses. Nope. I, I'm not holding. <laughs> <laughs> And he swings a second time. Yay! Oh, gets a whopping six. Misses. <laughs> Slices his friend in half. <laughs> Alright, so... One of them did hit, correct? One of them did hit. And Meriden, as that one did hit you, you feel almost like this chill go throughout your body as it, uh, as it strikes you. Yeah, I lost five. And you're cold. I'm cold, okay. What did that do to me? Ah. There you go. Down, okay. down, down. Not Meridan! So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, wait, what happened? Did he freeze? Yeah, he got blue. <laughs> he doesn't... You guys don't notice a difference in his looks. That's more for me, but... Oh, okay. He, as, I, as I told him, he felt like a chill going through his body. It's nothing that you guys will see visibly. That's for me to kind of remember. I thought he became an what? ice sculptor. <laughs> All right. Sir Diddy. Actually, it's your go, buddy. I've got less decks than you. Uh, well, uh, pretty much everything. So do you, have you got 12 with your wolf? Do what? Yeah. Uh, do you have a higher dex than I do with the wolves? I don't know what they've got. I can't tell you what their AC is. Oh, no, 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 no. Which one goes decks, first? I've got... Because I've got five and you've got five, so if your dex is high... Go ahead. So. No, go ahead. D Defenders with oh, dice. Okay, all right. So I will toddle over and beat on one of these things that's attacking my friend. Uh, I'll take... Uh, actually, I'll get to about... Uh, can I get to about there? Is that all right? I just want to be close enough so I can beat on both of them. So um, <laughs> I will... <laughs> I'll do a power hit on the first guy. And I don't know if that hits. And then I'll do a normal shot on the other one and I'll try and smite it. You reach out for your first hit and you see it almost mm. like it takes a big shard of like it's got a it still has armor on. Yeah, it looks like mm -hmm. it's 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 been in a very bad battle, but any blood that was on it looks like it's frozen. It holds up a, yeah. a shield that's kind of covered in ice, and as your sword hits that, the ice on the front of the shield shatters, but you don't seem to have done yeah. any damage to him that first hit. Uh, white walkers. Okay. Yeah, they look like white walkers. <laughs> Holy crap. You know nothing. Holy oh, crap. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll do those two shots, and if, if, if nothing happens, then I'll just put up a shield of faith as a bonus action then. Yeah, same thing on that second shield. Were you attacking yeah. the same guy or a different one? Uh, well, yeah, it would have been the same one if if uh, if I can't get through. Okay, so I'm you just come down it. once, and he kind of he kind of bounces off, and some of the ice kind of shattered up the shield, and the second shot comes around, he holds up his long sword, kind of matches your strike, and again, you see a little bit of frost and stuff kind of coming off of his uh, his shield as you strike into it, but oh you can't quite find the mark. Do you have Valyrian steel? 
Uh, <laughs> or dragon glass? This oh. is not I'm Game of Thrones. Uh, We're still playing Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. I'm just, <laughs> just trying to keep Meridian inside of the the bonus around me. So. All right. Anything yeah. else, Diddy? Uh, just the uh, the shield. Shield of faith. So the uh, shield of faith. Yeah. So I'm plus twenty now. And we'll give you a little uh, dot here to kind of help me remember you got something going on. <laughs> All right. So. I got to look at the distance here. And I got to look at their character sheets. You going to tell us how many there were, Sisleth? Or whatever your <laughs> name is? I don't know your name still. <laughs> All right, so Didemeyer. Mm -hmm. These two come strolling up here. Right next to you, snarling and growling, and with a little bit of like almost like ice crystals coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. And these two guys, I gotta measure them now. Hmm. I need, uh, let's see, yeah, pretty much everybody make me a perception check. Jesus well, Christ, I'm so bad at that. The soul sees the future. Is that a 14? Holy crap. That's massive. All right, so we've got, i got to do a little theater of the mind here. I'm still going to leave them in sight. But <laughs> Usul, you see both of them. Uh, Corrin, you see the one that's moving off to the right. You do not see this one over here. Okay? You guys got that? Yep. Okay. Now the other two, this one first is going to try to lay into Didemeyer with another bite. Ooh, Ooh 21! Yeah. Do I finally hit something? You, you finally hit something. What about that Shield of Faith or whatever? Yeah, it still gets past it. I thought oh, you said nice. it was plus 20 AC. No, no, no. Uh, plus 2. Oh. Plus <laughs> 20? Holy shit, we got a level 20 guy here or what? <laughs> and my class, 20 AC? Get off my head. class is 20. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, actually, no, the armor's not magical, is it, or is it? You tell me. I don't know. I have to pull up your character sheet. It is oh, magical. It is. Your AC should be on your character sheet. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it? Oh, that's right. It's not plate. Otherwise, it would have been 21. No, that's right. okay. Still would have hit anyway. Um, right. Yeah, you got me. All right, so same as, same as Meriden, as the mm. bite sinks into you, you can feel like this chill going through your body at, yeah. at this point. And yeah. one second, I've got to check something else out here. Yeah. All right. Dang it. Got too many freaking sheets up. There it is. Oh, is it, is it a magical bite? Because then I'll take all ten points. If it's not, I take seven. Yeah, these these are considered magical. If that's what you're, Ooh. you're asking. Oh, they bite. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I take all ten. Ow. Damn. Okay. This one kind of rolls up next to you. Sorry, I didn't get the right pointer. This one also rolled up next to you. The other one bit you. Uh, quick thing. It, I'm sorry. Hey, bro, you got on there. You got on hit DC 13 strength save or knock prone. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, give me a strength save as well, Didemeyer. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you rolled twenty one. Nice. Alright, but again, you still feel that you know, that bitter cold kinda of going through your your, uh, your soul here or your your body. This one walks yeah. up next to you again. You see it kinda of put its nose down close to the ground, then it raises its head up and starts howling and you feel mm -hmm. this big pulse. Everybody within thirty feet of it feels this big pulse of like this cold chill ring out. And pull my character sheet back up. I need Meriden and Didemeyer to make mm -hmm. me a con save. Okie dokie. Uh, make sure you do save and not check. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a check. But oh well. Yeah. That's oh, a check. sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Oops. And you're getting a bonus to all of your saves for um. Oh your... yeah. I've got to put. Pl- how do I put plus four in my saves? I've been that is. All, that. You can go to um. Like in your cog wheel on your character sheet, you can yeah. go to your global saving throw modifier and add that. But um, oh, okay. I'm not sure oh, it works. Uh, let's see. like um, with the paladin I'm playing currently, I have I had to like create custom roles for all of my saves because otherwise, you know, it doesn't work. And Mary, it's not in there for now, then I just roll it more, more manually. Add the the plus yeah. four. Excuse me. Done. Easy peasy. Uh, so let me just 26. go back. has got a 26. Yeah, so I've got 16, so that 22. should be... 22. You get plus 4 for being within 10 plus feet of Didamari. Yeah, you're within 10 yeah. feet of him, so you get buff. <laughs> Do I have point. to roll the constitution save as well? Uh, no, just... Just no, the you blue people. Um, within... Just the blue people. Yeah, just the blue people. Okay. <laughs> Dang it, don't metagame! You don't know they're blue! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Didamar, so I still need to roll that con save. That was a con check you did. Covered, uh, oh, uh, oh, that's a con check. Okay, so con save... Uh, saving checks? Yep. 11? Yeah, plus 4, 15? Ah, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you you're, gonna hate, you're gonna hate what's next worse. Let me make sure there's not... Okay, no. Alright, again, you feel this blast of cold chill kind of radiate out from this thing as it's howling about 30 feet out. And that is their turn. Alright, Usul. You're up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna yell out to everybody. There are three wolves. uh, Two to the right, one to the far left. As well as the two blue things. I'm not sure what those things are. (laughs) (laughs) We know what they are. Uh, Now my uh, bear is gonna make an attack. Um on the uh on the blue thing there the blue thing right in front of you <laughs> where <laughs> okay ooh rears up and sinks his claws in or teeth into him that finds its mark you hear the crunch as the teeth kind of bear down on his arm second one second one you see him kind of Reach out with his, with his claws, and uh, you see the uh, the thing hold up one one sword and kind of block the shot with this kind of ice cake sword. That one doesn't find its mark. Ooh, all right. Uh, I'm gonna move off to the left so I can get a better shot, and I am gonna throw fire at it. Fire at what? Uh, the same one the bear uh, okay, attacked. What, what kind of fire are you doing? A fireball? I'm going to do pro- produce <laughs> flame. Fireball. Don't fireball us, please. <laughs> and that one, you see the fireball splatter into it and a bunch of its, almost like its body, parts of its body kind of melt away, but nothing seems to catch on fire. Okay. And uh, that is the end of my turn. Okay. Ooh. Should I do this? Should I be a dick? Roll me a, uh, roll me a, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see the, the, the flame kind of explode a little bit, and you see the, the bear kind of singe out a little bit because it gets close to his face, but, uh, don't seem to be doing any damage to the bear. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Usul? No, that's, that's it for my turn. Okay. Meanwhile, these two tents are continuing to burn. Uh, pretty much the entire tent is now engulfed in flames. There go the babies. <laughs> Oops. Make this flame a little bigger if I can grab the corner of it. There we go. Alright, that it for you, Usul? Yep, that's my turn. Okay. Meriden. And your hey, two I'm twins. Here. I'm checking that on what number you have. I'm fucking... You know what you're gonna do, Meriden? Yeah, I'm casting slow. Uh, centered um, on... I'm centering the Didymar. 
Okay, what kind of globe was it? It's low. It's oh, slow. It's slow. It's slow. A 40 foot cube. Okay, go and copy and paste in the chat. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Or just you can just click the spell uh, on yeah. your character sheet, yeah. and it'll. There you go. Yep. There we go. Okay, you're casting that on Didemire. Pop, on top of Didemire because I I want to take all the four, and the four. Six creatures of his choice. Ah, six creatures of his choice. Okay. Yeah, he gets to choose. Yeah. So, I think it affects all of them. And my. All the. All the enemies, or you you, yeah, you yeah. applying that to uh, your friends too? <laughs> it would affect all four of these guys. Yeah, I. Because they trust you, right? They just don't trust Didemire. <laughs> I, 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 trust I don't them. care about the Didemire. <laughs> he he can right. solve his problems. All right, I'm gonna roll these offline. They're all wisdom saves, and it's got to beat your DC, right? Yeah. What your DC is what? Sixteen. Sixteen. Two, three, yeah, four of them. Alright, I gotta look one of them up, because that's kind of close. It's concentration. Alright, now, do you know if it affects them or not? Just say that in here. I don't think you really know unless you see them actually move. Okay. All right. So we'll cover that if and when it gets to their turn. All right. Yeah. Anything else, Meriden? Well, I, I guess I will know if they are, they are because <laughs> I'm moving back and then they take back so the move. Yep. Takes a minus two penalty. Can't use reactions. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, you moving back? Yeah. All three of them? All right, as you do, you see this one right here takes a swing at you with its uh, with its axe. Okay. So or with its, uh, sorry, long sword. And I'm assuming a ten doesn't hit you. Yeah, it doesn't hit. All right, so he swings and misses, and that's it for your turn, right, Meriden? Okay. Yes, it is. All right, Silith. All right, here we go. Give me one quick second. Better not try to run. I'm not saying I run, but I do like to run. <laughs> Better not run away. We need the freaking uh, Griffin X. You might, you might not end up with some arrows in your back. Don't run. You might end up with a freaking lightning bolt in your freaking tail. I don't know. I, I gotta tell you, Anthony, every, every time I, I see your character name, I start to say it. Uh, I can't remember what podcast it was I was watching once, but somebody had some kind of a dragon lizard type character, and he, he named himself like Synthesis. And so the D, the DM just got so pissed off because he kept butchered every single time he would say it. He just stopped calling him that. Okay, S. S is going to go here. Synthesis. <laughs> I can't even say it. Synthesis. Synthesis. Like photosynthesis, but with extra synthesis in it. Oh, synthesis? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Jesus. Say, that's that, a say that three times fast. Oh, dear lord, no. <laughs> Alright, Silith. What you doing? Alright, I'm gonna... Let's see, I need to see if this one's a bonus action or an action. Hold on. Um, cantrips are actions, aren't they? It depends on yeah. whether it says well, it's an action or not. Yeah, that was don't, don't say if it's a bonus oh. action or an action, yeah. No, aha! Uh -huh. I have a bonus action and an action. First, this is your favorite, Brian. <laughs> I need to move up. Okay, go uh, ahead. Hold on, let's see, I need to measure. Are you going to do what I think you're going to do? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do the thing. going to do. He's going to kill old Gidemire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> it's your favorite, Brian. Yeah, it is my favorite. You cast that on Didemire? I cast that on Didemire. I want to see already... these wolves and goblin things start hitting each other. Man, it's bad enough that he's already got, like, you know, uh, you know, 
plate wearing bastard, twenty or twenty one AC. Hey. Now you got to give him sanctuary too. Holy shit! That was that was a bonus action. So for my action, uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, where's that there? Sacred, Sacred flame. flame on the one that's missing HP. The one that's the the guy or the wolf? Which that one are you talking one. about? That one. Okay, you guys, could do all these flame actions right next to people. All right, it so it do descends a... directly on it. It's from my yeah. god. Dex it comes from, from, from the god. heavens directly on him. Screeching out from the clouds above, it slams right into the top of him. Maybe. Let me get his character sheet up here. Oh, wrong one. Deck save. Woohoo! He sidesteps that son of a bitch. These little uh, icy dudes are a little bit more nimble than you expected them to be. And he like, sidesteps as it slams into the ground and kind of sizzles a, a hole into the snow right there in the ice. He takes half damage. Oh, no, oh, you bastard. That's Sacred Flame. Um, oh, yeah, no. Oh, like the one. Yeah, it would save you take half damage, I think, on there when it were recast it. Yeah. Must see now. Same throw. Take one d8, two d8 at fifth level. Target gains no benefit from cover. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you got your sanctuary, but you didn't get your sacred flame. <laughs> they don't take any damage if they make the save. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I didn't give him any damage. He's good. He's still yeah. standing there. Got an icy grin on his face. <laughs> Anything else, Stilith? Uh, I got five more feet of movement, I think, so, um, who can I get behind? <laughs> <laughs> no one's behind poor Diddy. <laughs> a little bit closer to the name. Fine, I'm coming to help. Yeah. I didn't even tie it off. Daddy, I didn't want to jump with Alright, is that it, Silla? Yeah. Daddy, are you ready? All right, Baron. Okay, we're doing the thing. Doing the thing. Uh, Your thing I is. Do this. I can move here. Sorry, Dedemire. Um. Uh. Which one are you going to do? I'm oh doing God. a cone, and I'm trying to get all those guys in it. They're gonna 30 shoot. foot cone? Wait, what? I'm gonna slam the ground and turn it into difficult terrain and try and knock some people prone. Like an earthbender. Yeah, exactly. I'm an earthbender. Totally. Yeah, you can pretty much get all those guys if you want, if you choose to. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah, yeah, it's everybody. Him. It's everybody within the area, so sorry! <laughs> no, that's right. It's just me and the bear. <laughs> oh wait, we're so, the bear and the bear. It's a fourteen deck save, right? Yes, DC fourteen. Damn. Damn. Okay. How about these other guys? Nope, he falls prone, and that's he doesn't want. So this one here falls. Whoops, get back to my pointer. This one here falls prone. Let me grab him and. Put him sideways. All right, so that one falls the ground underneath all you guys all shakes. I also need to see the same thing for the bear, and the same thing for uh, Didamar. <laughs> That's that awesome. Sense. That's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. He's got 20 like... AC and sanctuary. I think he's he's good. Yeah, I'm laying down with my buddies. Turn yourself sideways, it's Didamar, it's so I can remember. Uh, uh, sideways, right? On. Okay, and um. Do still do the same thing for your black bear? Yep. He falls over Technically too. Technically it makes it. If he's within 10 feet of... Oh, plus Diddy. Yeah, it yeah. makes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's shame right. My... Yeah, it's shame my car. <laughs> Does that mean my guy automatically makes it too? Creatures uh, of a size greater no. than large or with more than 10 <laughs> they, they have to be my allies for the case. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your aura okay, would extend um, to enemies. Uh, no, 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 I'm just wondering if it extends to Abthor. <laughs> to me? Oh, you think I'm your enemy? <laughs> no, it's how you talk about me. <laughs> Alright, what else, Baron? Uh, um, I am gonna battle axe this guy. 
I'm gonna bad lass him. Let's see. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you find your mark on him. Twice. He holds up the shield and your axe just kind of blasts right through him with that one. If what says, and you know what, I'm Valyrian Steel. I'm gonna action surge and keep hitting him, I think, or try to. Not so good. Third one misses, the fourth one does hit him. That's the, if he's prone it should be, oh he's not prone, sorry. I tried to prone him first, but uh. Anything else? There? Um, no, that's it. I All think. Right. Yeah, no, I can't do anything else. All right, Quorn. Alrighty. I think you said Come I can only see the, the right wall for now. So that's what I'm going for. So he's running <laughs> past this guy. Busy. No, I'm not gonna. I'll circumvent them. So I'll take a opportunity attack. Cause I have like, let's see, 55 feet. Yeah, you probably got enough movement. Cause you move at like 80 or something, can't you? <laughs> yeah, I have 55. Yeah, dash feet, is a bonus so action anyway. To, I could do it with just enough movement. Okay, I'll allow it. That's fine. All right, you're Neo. I'll attack the wolf. Are you hungry like the wolf? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that Z. Here comes Neo again. Uh, okay, your first one finds its mark. Bits and pieces of frozen fur go flying off. Second one finds its mark. And he drops. You still got your third attack. Okay, I'll move down on this guy. Alright. And that one finds its mark as well. So Corn rushes in around you guys in a blur. All you see is little bits and pieces of snow kind of coming up in his heels. Circles around, I see him kind of slide like he's a, a ice hockey player, throwing snow into the, the wolf's face, and then he uses that opportunity to kind of just bash the shit out of him, and he drops. He kind of does a somersault over towards the uh, the little blue dude and gives him a swift kick in the crotch. He's kind of looking wobbly there, but he is still standing. Anything else, Corn? No, that's all I got. All right, Abe Forth. Um, well, my plan's kind of messed up, but can I just hit this guy with a fireball if I fought it, shot it over here and, like, made it only hit this guy? You can try. I can try. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you if it will or won't work. You try well, it, and then you'll I find out. If I fired it here, and it has a 20-foot radius, then it should only hit him. Okay. Okay. I will do that. Oh, wait, hold on. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Die! <Yeah. laughs> um, and because I never do it, I'm gonna make a, instead of a dexterity saving throw, I'm gonna make it like a intelligence saving throw for this guy. Okay, yeah, it's part of your... Uh, oh yeah, that thing. Or a save change. I mean, I never yeah. use it, so why not? Alright, so intelligence save for him. It's a mind, it's like an, an illusionary fireball, and it like, hits his brain, and it makes him think he's burning to death. Like the skeleton right there. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yeah, these guys are pretty damn smart. Alright, so you catch him, and it does 30, 32 points of damage on this guy. Do, do, do. You see the, just on the edges of it, you see the end of it kind of on his rear end, his tail kind of like melt part of it away where you can see like a, almost like a little bit of bone that are left there but it's still standing it there but it is taking a lot of damage pretty much the whole back side of it is nothing but bones yeah um okay, but uh, just like theoretically i'm not saying that i'm doing this but um if i was right next to sir didemeyer can i what would i ha could i like make him not prone anymore help him up uh, you can take half your movement to help him get up. That's what I'll rule. Oh, I can do that? To help him get up. It'll still be on his turn when he gets up. But I'll rule that it doesn't take half his movement anymore for him to get up. Okay, I'm going to do this. Um, Fey Anstry, Fey Teleport. Misty stuff, 30 feet closer. Bing. I don't know why there's still a heart. Okay. 
And then, um, I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm going to use a little bit of my movement to get closer to him. And then I'll use the rest of my movement to help him up. Okay, how much movement did you use to get there? Um, 15. And okay. then that'll be the rest of it. Okay. Get All up, right, Sir so, Didemaya! So, <laughs> Didemaya, on your turn, on your turn, I'm on rule, it doesn't take you any extra movement to stand back up. So you'll still no, get your full, 30, your full 30 feet when it's your mm -hmm. turn. Okay? Yep. All right, uh, these guys are up next. Oh, well, this guy will use half his movement to stand back up. If I can grab a hold of him, and there's too much shit there. He's standing up now. This guy's not standing up. I can't get to him to turn him, but he is. And let's see. One, two, he's got three choices. Oh, he's, yeah, just three choices. So I'll roll one of these. And he stands up and swings at the bear. I'm assuming a 12 does or doesn't hit Usul. Ah, uh, let's see. I think the bear is a little higher. Has a, a natural roll. AC of 11. Just it outside. Oh, no. Okay. So that's for 5 damage. Yep. He's, he's still kicking. And he swings again. I'm assuming an 18 hits. Yep. Okay, and you don't know this, but that... Bear feels a cold chill going throughout his bones. He feels blue. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the other one standing up. He's got one, two, three choices. Okay, and he's going for Abe Forth. Okay. So. Oh, I was hoping he would attack me. <laughs> it's on my mage armor. A 20? Wait, 20 hits? No, no, oh, 20? Then I'm gonna use uh, shield to make my AC 20. <laughs> <laughs> Does that last for your entire turn? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the second one, you get to 17. So, no hit on that one either. And that's it for them. Alright, Dinamar. Okay, so I'll stand back up. And. Because of me. I'll have... Yes, thank you. <laughs> And yes, you're protected. Uh, and I'll have one swing at the wolf and one swing at, uh, if I kill it. The you don't look so thing. good, did a Meyer. <laughs> so I'm feeling blue. Um, and I'm not I rolling too well either. And I can't roll for, for whatever's uh, and try again. Which one oh, are you swinging at? Uh, the wolf. And the then wolf. at the creature, so yeah, the wolf if I didn't hit it first time. Yeah, your, your first swing misses badly. It's like you get up and you're like so anxious to fight, you don't know what the hell you're doing. The second one, you get your yeah. feet under you, and you find its mark, and you pretty much sever what's left of its uh, its backbone in half. So half of it's laying there in bones, the other half is like this frozen-looking fur. Oh, fantastic. So it's down so I get one more shot, because I knocked it out, and I'm long sword. Uh, what is it? That's oh, yeah. Sword That's thing. right. So the last shot, Great weapon. I'll shoot at, the, um, at one of the blue boys. Which one? Oh, wow. Uh, one of my... L this this guy here, if you can see him, that guy. Okay. Yeah, and he's not down. He's standing up. I just couldn't get to him to move because so much stuff around yeah. there. But that one does yeah. hit. Let's see if I can yep. click on him to take some... And I'll, away. I'll, I'll do some smiting on him as well. So let's see. Is he undead? No, he's not dead. He hey, no, as long as he's not undead because it does extra damage if it is. So I'll do... Oh, I thought he asked if he was dead. No, undead. Undead. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not saying if he's undead or not. Okay, well, if he is undead, <laughs> he no, takes sorry. an extra D8. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Uh, so there you go, and you can roll the extra... And he takes nine extra points. Okay. You blast into him with your... Uh, calling on your god, I'm assuming, at this point, to give you a little bit yeah, of extra oomph onto it. And you say that, that, that's... That's radiant damage, right? Uh, it is radiant, and I'm just going to knock off a spell slot. There we go. Okay. And you see it kind of do an extra little damage in there, but uh, you almost were questioning whether it was undead or not. It didn't do quite do mm. as much damage as uh, you thought it would do on an undead. Okay. All right. I can detect, but I'm not going to do that yet. All right. Is that it for your turn, Didemar? That's it for me. All right. So... 
This one is going to come up here. Well, let me check how far I can go. Yep. You didn't see him coming. All right, who are the ones that saw the one on the left? I think only Usul saw the one on the left. Is that correct? Corn? Say, yep. Somebody announced him. Was it Corn? I announced it. He announced it, but that doesn't mean they saw it. And someone also saw the one over here. I don't remember who it was. But this one's going to come running through here. Did my owl see him? Silith. Oh, your owl's over there. Give me a perception check. The, what's the modifier for an owl? Oh, right I think here. The owl doesn't have it as a skill. Oh, nah. never mind. Nah, your <laughs> owl didn't see him either. <laughs> I'm a retarded owl. <laughs> He's Can watching the battle. Him? He's not watching over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's looking for All right. squirrels. Alright, so he sneaks up here on uh, Silith and tries to take a bite here. Can I have any reaction? That's a 20. For eight damage. And roll me a strength save. That's it. Uh, wait, is there anything I can do? I'm looking to see if there's anything I can do. I don't think there is, though. I, I can't dodge, can I? Isn't that a feat or something you have to have? You have to announce that b uh, before your turn. That, that basically takes the place of your uh, your action. If you want right, to right. Uh, yeah, you ready to dodge, dodge action. See, it's been a while. I told you. All right, uh, yep. strength save. Ooh. And Meriden sees right in front of him, so is Usul, that uh, this wolf comes diving out from behind this tree and knocks Silith down and takes a decent sized chunk out of one of his legs. Oh, fuck. There, he's Go grabbed now. Go ahead and lay yourself sideways, uh, Silith. Let us know that you're, uh, you're prone. Okay, and this guy. Do, 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 do. Everyone, roll me another perception check. Everyone? Yep. Oh, God. How many of those there? <laughs> oh, my God, I actually oh rolled God. that. I'm actually blind. I'm Is that everybody? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Nobody sees him. Wow. Nobody sees him. 21. Damn. Nice. The one in the tree? Uh, this one over here. Nothing. Oh. No one, no one sees that one. I mean, it is behind a I bunch of brushes and mountains, so... I'm sorry? What was that? I'm sorry? I said A4? I don't see anything anyways. You said it's not about A4, a something. Oh, I mean, yeah, it was... like, it's behind a bunch of bushes and stuff, so, I mean, it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Alright, so, that's his turn. Usul. Okay, bear is gonna attack uh, the one laying down. That's not right, really laying down. Right. Okay. Okay. First one misses. Second one hits. Takes a big chunk at him with his claws. A few more bits and pieces of ice go flying off, but he is still standing. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, um, shoot a thing of flame at the uh, the one in the bush or the tree right next to me. Uh, this one right here. Oh, I guess that you don't see that one over there. All right, he's gonna have partial coverage from you unless you move, because you got Meriden and Silith kind of in your way. Well, I'm on the ground, so I'm not really in the way. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can you can shoot over top of Silith. Just don't roll a one. <laughs> Arrow stops, falls, thunk out. <laughs> he, he's good. You know, everyone is trying to kill you with Silas. Yeah, that definitely hits. Four points of damage. The animosity is bleeding through from the last character. A little bit. And that's, that's yeah. produced flame. That is. <laughs> oh, shit. Alright, as you do that, well, let's see how this will probably work to your advantage, actually. You shoot at this uh, wolf underneath the tree, and you see a small spark ignite. Well, it's not going to be that big. Oh, Jesus. 
That's a good size spark. <laughs> I just copied the other one. Uh, yeah, that's a spark. And you can, again, it's not technically on the wolf yet, but the, the tree is starting to kind of catch on fire right above where you hit the uh, the wolf. Very good. And that that should uh, be my turn. Are you a okay. druid? I am. Oh, goodness. <laughs> a druid that's burning the forest. Destructive yeah. druid. I've heard of you guys. Maybe he's a druid of the desert. There are no forests. Oh, maybe. So no. He's trying to make everywhere a desert. Oh my god, that's evil! <laughs> and most of you, without even a roll, you'll notice that the flames that were in the tents have now kind of start spreading to some nearby trees as well. Because they're all starting to catch on fire. That wasn't me. I'm on oh really? Well, it's no, you. We gotta, we gotta put this out or something. You started a forest fire. Wasn't me. Remember, only you can prevent <laughs> forest we fires. Sylvanas, Usul, or whoever the hell the nature god is. Do I have yeah, a spell? Sylvanas. No, I don't have any freaking spells on this guy. <laughs> Alright, Usul, is that it for you? That is it. Yep. Alright, Meriden. I'm moving here. And then I'm over up. Need help? That's right. Okay, I will cast fire bolts. On a bear, oh, right? Jesus. More fire. No, on the one that is actually in the wolf. On the wolf? The wolf next to me. Yeah, yeah, the wolf next to you. Okay. Oh, fire bolt! I think it said fire ball. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. I like that. I was gonna fire a ball. And unfortunately, you fired the fire ball, and like the the wolf was already paranoid from the burning tree above it, and your fire bolt goes wide. And you see it land into this tree over here. That's all. And a small little flame starts to develop inside that tree. Oh God. <laughs> Stop throwing fire! <laughs> I I don't know what's going on. Why are you guys burning down the forest? Anything else, Meriden? Uh, no, no, that's all. Okay. Silith, laying on the ground underneath a burning tree and a, a big bad wolf. Okay, let's see. Um, first off, can I cast from the ground? I think you would have... If you attack from the ground, you have disadvantage. So yeah, I'm gonna say you have disadvantage. I don't, I don't know. If this is a really disadvantage thing. It's uh, half of your movement uh, to stand back up. But uh, yeah, I'll stand back up. Okay. Now I vaguely recall you saying something earlier about the ice melting off and the bones sticking out. Yeah, you would have seen this one back here when that fireball hit it. I mean, most of its body kind of just melted off and there were still bones uh, sitting there behind it. Almost like I'm icy to, bones. I'm going to... Where am I at here? Let's see. Let's measure. Yep. I am going to uh, channel divinity, turn slash destroy undead. Alright. Is that a roll? Is that a... What is that? That is... Hold on one second. Like, click over here. Oh, wait, no, that's the blessing one. Give me one sec. Hmm? So, it is... Turn undead, it must... Each undead that can hear or see me within 30 feet must make a wisdom saving throw. Which is... What is my... 16? Is for my spell thing. Okay. Uh, a turn creature must spend its turns trying to run away from me. Can't willingly move within 30 feet of me. It also can't take reactions. For its action, it can only use dash. Uh or dodge if it can't move anywhere. However, uh, because I'm over level 8, uh, what is this thing here? Hold on. 
Uh, when an undead of crit challenge rating one or lower fails at saving throw against my turn on dead feature, it is instantly destroyed. All right. So describe how you you cast this. I hold out my big gaudy ass uh, red gemmed cross, which is like on a thick gold chain around my neck, and I'm just like, back foul beast, back, and I'm just like screaming, blood running down my legs, like kind of jittery. Wow, that was quite uh, that was quite a description, and it does nothing. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Why are you shouting those things, lizard? <laughs> so, uh, man, man. the 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 next thing I'm gonna do uh, that was uh is uh definitely gonna be sanctuary on myself. <laughs> Alright. And, uh, uh... Uh, yeah, um, then I'm gonna move him. I have 15 feet of movement left, and he can't attack me, so... Uh, well, he can try. <laughs> he well, can. hope he can. He, uh, he can try. I'm gonna move away. Okay. That way. Well, well, of course he's gonna try. Uh, wisdom save, right? Uh, yep, wisdom. DC, what? Is it DC against uh, my spell thing saving, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't 16? matter. He rolled a nine. So no. He can't attack you. He's gonna pull no, out the, the like, flame oh, above no. him. <laughs> he sees like, oh shit, there's fire above me. <laughs> Anything else? Stilith? Yeah, I moved away and uh that was my action and my bonus action and my movement. So I'm done. Alright, Baron. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna try and hit this guy in front of me again. Why are you gonna do that? But he didn't do anything to you. Why are you Did hitting he? me? <laughs> not, not you. <laughs> Blue guy. I'm only nice. And no, not not Jeremiah. Axe smashes into his shoulder, and a big chunk of like ice and looks like frozen flesh kind of bounce off of uh, Abe Fort's uh, front. <laughs> Ew. Your second one does the same thing. This time you swing right for the neck. And the whole frozen head, sludgy blood, something you're not sure, just all splats up against uh, Abe Force's chest. Got a little bit more of this guy next to him, but he is now dead. He drops to the ground. Good job. Anything else, Baron? Uh, I'll move on to the next guy, I guess. Stand between Abe Forth and the Black Bear. And that's it. That's my turn. Alright. Quarren. I could be a dick and try and prone him again, but I won't do that. Alrighty, I'm going for... The Actually, no, I can do that. Because I have a bonus action thing. I will, um... I'm going to take what? the attack action. Uh, I can, I, as a shield master, I can try and knock him prone. On a, okay. As a bonus action. Alright. Posed, uh, athletics check. Nice. Opposed athletics. Let me get his sheet up here. Oh shit, I rolled a fucking four. You rolled a four? <laughs> oh, you did, oh, didn't you? Holy shit. These guys are actually pretty good with athletics. Oh my god, how are your modifiers so high? <laughs> Expertise, man. It's great. And he rolls an 18. Oh, uh, he beat me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't knock him prone. I just slam my shield to his stomach and it does nothing. <laughs> like a thong. I feel like it's hollow inside there. Anything else, Corn? I'm sorry, Baron. Why did Why Baron go? Why did I say Baron? I, I thought it was Corn's turn. I I just had a bonus action that I did nothing with on my turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So Corn, I'm sorry. Can't do that. All good. Um. So yeah, I'll go on this guy and attack him. You know, dive into the flames? I uh, might as well, right? <laughs> Pretty much very, very soon. I'm assuming that misses. Yep, first one misses, second one hits. Third one hits. He's still standing, but you're fine on your spots. Anything else? No, I feel like we pretty much... I shouldn't waste a key right now. 
So that's it? Or you are, or you're not? No, I'm not going to get anything else. That's it. Okay. All right, 8-4th. Hmm, what would 8-4th do? Oh, I know. <laughs> get something on fire. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Okay, what, you, what are you fireball this going? one, but it's going to be over here so that only hits him. And all of those trays. <laughs> Boom. Okay, hold on. Rip California. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's another deck do. save, DC 15. Uh, awesome. Do the trees get to make a deck save? No, but uh, Corn does with advantage, so he shouldn't even take anything. Alright. The reason I'm making you do that, Corn, because you are engaged with him fighting him, so. I mean, he's yeah. fine. Yeah, he's Dex Master. <laughs> Alright, so the wolf takes 25 points of fire damage. And you see him and the tree kind of explode into a big ball of flame. He kind of melts away. And Quorn's standing right in the middle of fire and like, you know, kind of checking his fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> I got him, Quorn, don't worry! I'm a bit more He's concerned like... about that. I'm more worried about the trees at this point, because I worship Sylvanas as well, so... Yeah, that was a fireball, so that that tree's gonna I'm be on more on fire than to that. Pat out the tree or something. Like I, that. I mean, this this tree's probably on fire. You probably killed your familiar. Oh, uh, that one. Well, no, he gets to act on my turn, so I'm gonna make him fly over there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna make him fly back to my shoulder. Next thing you know, you're and on then, fire. And then, and then the badass glasses both float down to your faces. <laughs> If this was a town, we'd be in so much trouble. Yeah. Alright, so that's it for you, right, A4? Um, I want to go away. <laughs> so, Alright, so move away. I have one guy. Oh, you are going to move away. Okay. Yeah, so. I'm going to move away. Alright, so that guy will get a reaction. I missed you step. Uh, does he still get a reaction on that when you miss you step or not? Um, no, I just, just teleport away. Teleportation, yeah. Okay, alright, so never mind then, you sneaky bastard. Okay, so, Soul Bitten guy, he's still standing up. He's got one, two, three choices. Wow, finally, someone's gonna try to hit Didemire, and he still has Sanctuary on him, right? That lasts for duration. Nope, yeah. it last it oh the thing I put on him? Yeah. Nope, it, once he attacked it came off. Okay. So he gets a normal attack. Well, uh, two of them. On Didemire. And of course he rolls like shit. Didemire dodges him and he's gonna die. I look at it. I look at the creature and I say, <laughs> Yeah, I, I know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging no dude. Swinging. All right, Didamar, what are you and your sentient uh, sword going to do? Oh, I'm just going to whack it. <laughs> oh, my little sentient sword sitting next to me. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Um, sentient sword, though, Didamar. <laughs> something like that. Uh, let me see. I trust him. <laughs> hey, it's talking back. I can't help that. Wow. Yeah, both those hit. Matter of fact, your Wait. first one waxing up. So go ahead and describe how your first hit pretty much just crumples this guy to the ground. Oh, so big two-handed sword. So I'll take its legs out, and then uh, as it's flying, I'll do a backhander and slam its skull into one of the trees, <laughs> like playing cricket. Right, nice. All right, so the force is on fire. Everything you guys see is dead. And you don't know where that one went. Yes, we killed the trees and the wolves and those <laughs> things. <laughs> the wolves are I'll call out are suicidal did. or Does anybody does anybody else see any more of those things before? We this is what you wanted, right, Stephen? Usul, give me a uh, a wisdom check real quick. Well, well that should be <laughs> coming up. I'll sort of move. Like Usul, did you hear me? Yep, coming up. Okay. 
Yeah, it's, it was a low DC. You still know that there's one more out there somewhere, you just don't know what happened to it. But you're the only one that saw the other one before he disappeared. Okay. Let's go hunting. <laughs> I'm just gonna see if I can find any eggs over here. Is it my turn? Uh, we're basically out of initiative, because you guys don't see any other um, okay. bad guys. Help me! But the forest around you is on fire. fire. <laughs> okay. Well, I was, um, I I'd like to send axes. the uh, bear um, in the direction where that last one went. I have an idea. La last place you saw it was up here somewhere, as I recall. Okay. And uh, I'd like to do that and just see, if, see what I can find. Okay. Go ahead and send your bear up there, and we'll let everyone else decide what they're doing about the forest fire they have around them. Can I do something about the forest fire? I'm sorry, what? Can, can I do something about the forest fire? Yeah, all of you guys can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to polymorph into a young white dragon again and use my ice breath to try and start the fire. Okay. Alright, I'll allow that. Um, did I give you access <laughs> to the young white dragon before, or do I need to pull it out again? Um, you did, but I don't see its picture. Do you see the enemy section over here? Oh, hit, there it is. Okay, so you do have but it I then, right? I can't control it. Oh, you can't? Okay, let me... Here, I'll do it real quick. Uh, well, I got so many freaking names in here. Uh, you are Abe Forth, right? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Now you should have access to it. Okay, I want to I wanna start ice breathing all of it. Stop the okay. fire. Okay, and you, you easily can knock out this one uh, during your turn. Your ice breath quickly kind of douses out the flames on that. But you still see there are other ones out here. What's everybody else doing? So, uh, Meridon cut off the, the, the mirrors, so he's not only him now. And he will go to go up. What? And, and he will try to hail frost in the fire. Ah, okay. So you're going to try to put out some fire as well on the tent here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you're using what? Let me move back to chat so I can see oh, it. I deleted myself. Oh, you deleted your guy. All right, <laughs> Meriden just disappears. <laughs> That's the invisibility spell. Okay, let me pull you back in here if you're not already doing it. Yeah, Let's I remember where I, I put you. I was deleting my neural image, not myself. There you go, and poof, he pops back into existence. Yeah. Alright, so what is it you're using to uh, put out the fire? Hail Frost, that's all I have. Okay, uh, what's... Trap? So the Brave Frost. Yes, the Cantrip. What's the normal damage? 12 cold? Okay, alright, that's a little bit less damage than a, than a Fire Breathing Dragon does, but I'll say you reduce the fire to about half its size. Okay. If I see any eggs in there, I'll jump in and, and go get them. <laughs> see any I'm eggs in the flames? Open. Are you going yeah, to dive in? Are you going to dive well, into the I'm, flames uh, looking for him, or how are you, how you doing yeah. that, Edomar? <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a heroic sort, <laughs> under, and I'm hoping that the snow's melting, and if I can see them under the flames, then I'll, yeah, I would, I'd dive in and try and get them. Give me a, a perception check, Edomar. Okay. Not much of a night if he doesn't go and do uh, one crazy heroic thing a week. Okay, so... Where are There's no damsel here. Are you a true paladin? Yeah. Like lawful good? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a, a every a, any other paladin, I don't think they're paladins. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> so I, 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 I was a lawful good. Uh, I'm, the the party. I'm playing a lawful evil one. Yeah, I don't Does that count, that's a right? paladin. That's an anti paladin. Right. Oh, oh, with, with, with that perception check, you can see yeah. that pretty much anything that was in the these tents has, has been torched to the point where yeah. You're not sure anything would uh, survive that. Oh, okay. So none of the eggs made it like we're in, buried in snow and have now yeah. started. Popping. Your perception check is all I told you. It looks like everything yeah. in there has been fried to a Done. crisp. Sisla yeah. has them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, a, a young white dragon. I can't talk, so. No, he has the eggs. But I, I can't attack him. I have to keep him right. at the fire. Well, all, all I'm going to do is stay nice and close to the fire so this blue stuff wears away, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get warm. Oh, that's better. I'd like to turn to Silith and ask him or demand where 
the eggs are. So it's just like, I didn't have him, ask him. And I'm like, right, what's his name? Uh, Brett, turn the there. Just real quick, out of character. Uh, Silith, both you and Renault, uh had a pretty good idea where the eggs were being kept or stored. And you know that they were be they were in the one of the tents last you knew. Holy fuck. Ah, uh, go ahead, sure. Uh, the eggs were in the tents. Bloody hell. So did he's shaking his head going, oh, Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> because yeah. they're omelets now. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'll take my greatsword and try and scoop out what there is left. Can you use Revivify on them? Actually. <laughs> I yeah. can, <laughs> if I had it. <laughs> I don't have food left. The, the, um, <laughs> the, the, just so I'm aware, this fire, the snow's melting, right? Hmm. Yeah, the snow all all around these where these fires are, are melting, but um, the the fires are still growing at this mo at this moment. Really? He had control water this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> that can just put all the fires water. out. No, well, it has to be enough water. Yeah, hold on. Oh, you, can't turn the, you can't turn the you can't turn like, water the snow vent. into water. No, it has to be get, any water. You should water. get the um cantrip uh control water. I think that lets you turn it into water. No, this this is a spell control water. It's a I meant um spell. shape water. There's a there's a cantrip I think called shape water too. Uh, I didn't see it. Is there enough uh, water with the melted snow that with all the fires going on? There should on? be. Yeah, she it. Hold on, Plus, I, I get I get to collect it with an uh, with an uh, hundred foot cube and I can move it in here. Yeah, it's if you got enough water. Alright, here I'm all let me do something offline here. Okay. I'm gonna rule that unless someone else is doing something else over the course of like the next uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, you can how long does this thing last? Actually sorry, it's three hundred feet and lasts up to ten minutes. Up to ten minutes. Oh okay, so that changes a little bit things. Um up to th where, on a side, yeah. In what order are you doing this? Uh, I am Where are you starting? The, I am flooding the water from the outsides in towards the tents. Okay, but you're starting with the, the fire up here? No. So I'm only putting out these two fires. What I'm doing is I'm bringing the water inwards with the flood to like basically make it stand up here. Imagine like if I, you know, you know like those upside down jello things? Mm -hmm. Imagine I'm pulling the water in to do that in here. Okay. But your, so your, in like, in, your like, intention is to get... Like, your intention is to get everything up here, all the all the flame up here on the north side, right? Uh. Eventually, with your ten minutes of concentration on this, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm pulling all the water in here, and then I'll move it over here, and then over here. Okay. All right. So here's what I'm going to rule. T it takes you at least ten minutes to kind of get all the melted water on these things, and you can put out the fires from except for like maybe the very tip tops of the trees. Because you're just kind of running out of water at that point over the, over the past 10 minutes. Because it steams off, right? Right. Yeah, I, I, I keep doing that. I mean, I'm hail frosting everything too. Ah, so you're also adding that, and that's a cantrip, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Go and I'm gonna keep ice pressing everything. Ice press, whatever. All right. So after I mean, about like 10 minutes of time, you guys got a bunch of black, crispy trees here, but they're not burning anymore. That took you guys at least 10 minutes. So while you're doing that, Usul, what was your bear doing? Uh, he was up there looking for tracks or uh, whatever uh, he could fi figure out on the wolf. Okay, give me a perception check for your bear. And I think it has percep I think it has advantage only on smell, right? You said you were looking for tracks. Yeah, smelling. Bear has advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on smell. Right. That's yeah. why I asked, and you said he was looking for tracks, so. Okay, so uh, what am I look? What am what Perception check. Want? Perception check, but not an advantage, because he's just looking for tracks. Okay, and I do not have perception on here, so that would be wisdom? Correct. Okay. Yeah, he does notice a, a few tracks that are heading back uh, uh, this direction. And he's going to he follow the know... tracks? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll move him in the direction of where the tracks are leading. And while he's doing this, uh, just like stealthing, he can't run. This is at normal pace. 
but uh, you'll see your bear kind of making his way over this direction, and he starts walking this direction. Let me put an arrow out here. He starts watch, walking this direction. Do you see my arrow? Sorry. Yeah. During the course of that 10 minutes while everyone's putting out all the fires. Now, it's up to you whether... I don't know, is he going to tell him to keep going? Are you going to follow him? What, what's your plan here? Uh, I, I do want to follow him. And on the way by... Um, I am uh, talking to Beacom as well. Uh, Beacom would have ran up here once uh, Silith said that there was uh, eggs in the tents. At this point, he's kind of lost interest in anything you're tracking. He was heading up to the tent. But I guess technically you would have time to say something to him before he went up there. So what would you have said to him? Did you get that? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you saying that like whispering it to him, or are you saying it kind of loud, or how, how are you going across there? Whisper. Okay. All right. Um, and then I'll, I'll go and follow the eggs. Uh, I'm sorry, the black bear. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody else? What are they doing here? I've just been watching for enemies the entire time, just looking around, see if there's anything I can see. Okay. Give me a perception check, Baron. <laughs> I'm just gonna be. So I've just been like <laughs> watching. I'm, I, uh, Mary uh, is actually curious to understand what those creatures were. Those creatures we uh, just killed. She gonna examine the bodies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he he will. It's an investigation, right? Yeah, investigation or nature if if you're skilled in that. Okay, let's see. Will be investigation. Okay. All right. So as you take a look at them, um, first thing you notice is uh, you don't think these are some kind of idea uh, undead. They are some kind of magical in nature. But that's about as far as you can you can tell. It's not like any other wolf you've ever seen before, or these even these these men. And as you're investigating, Renault uh, will actually walk up here. And look down at these guys and who share with whoever's within their shot that these were some of the, the guys that were in their group. Mm -hmm. But they hardly look like themselves anymore. Holy crap. Uh, That's I, bad. Get, I get a bit away. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I want to land next to the Dragonborn. <laughs> So, where are the eggs? Like I speak Draconic, and you're a dragon right now, right? Okay, so. I'll speak. I'll speak in Draconic too, then. Where are the eggs? The eggs were in the tents. Like the eggs were safe in the tents. Can I check them? The, the wolves <laughs> showed up. You can insight check me, but I'm telling the truth. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's see if he knows you're telling the truth, though. So what does that mean? Persuasion? Yeah, roll of persuasion. <laughs> I am telling the absolute godforsaken truth. I swear to God, those eggs were absolutely fine. Uh, they were safe. We would keep them safe. We thought we rescued them. But a fourth, you're not sure if you believe him or not. You can't quite read him. <laughs> I think we should go for a ride, and I'm gonna. Uh, grab him and then let fly him up in the air. Uh, are you sure on that one? Yeah. So, uh, how we've been doing this for ten minutes, right? So sanctuary has worn off. However, uh, I'm gonna definitely gonna be freaking out a little bit, and I'm gonna blink away. <laughs> Try to okay, blink so out you're distance. just gone now. I just moved ten feet away. Well, oh, okay. he has to, he has to, I, he has to I, I, roll whether he blinks away or not. Well, we're not in initiative, so how does this work? Roll initiative. Keep, keep rolling. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. roll initiative. oh, I don't have the, uh, the... Do I have the initiative him? Oh, yeah, I do. Hold on. <laughs> just, a, just a quick one, Brian. Did I find... Did I look under this place and find any eggs at all, or are they all smashed to bits and broken and burnt? 
Throw me a uh, investigation in there. Yeah. Okay. Just while these guys are physically doing what they're doing. Technically, you'll you'll get that with advantage. So if you want to roll it again, you can, because Beekwim's in there okay. searching through it as well. Let me go ahead and roll for him. Oh yeah, yeah, Beekwim digging through there, and he finds what looks like a basket of of uh, of two eggs uh, yeah. that are pretty much gone, cool. pretty much cooked. Yeah, you get to go first, Sicily, if your uh, dexterity yeah. modifier is higher. Yeah, because I, I can't put out the fire. I'll just, I'll help him perceive, and then I'll go and skin the only available wolf available. For skinning, but there's a bird oh, to no dice. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab you, then. I'm still going to move. Oh, well, can I grab him as an, uh, uh, a reaction? It's going to be opposing your athletics against his strength or dexterity. Okay. Natural 20? Oh, go, go. <laughs> Snatched him up. Is it, is it a save or dex? It's going to be just a, no, dex, it's, it? it's a check. He's opposing checks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I grab him, and I'm, and then since that was just my reaction, I'm going to use... No, um, it's, it's not going to be a reaction to grab him. I'm saying that's going to be an action to do that. Ah, because you that. ran away from me. I was running away. Right. It's still going to be an action to actually do that. I mean, that's that's a, that's a six-second type of operation. Try to get a hold of him and get him under control. But I still have my movement. Yeah, you still have so your movement. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to shoot the hell up in the air. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's 80 feet in the air. Oh, shit. All right, so he moves up in the... Holds you up in the sky by 80 feet in the air there, Silith. You still doing the misty step thing, or what? What's what's going on with that? Uh, I can blink. Or blink. Although, if you read the call, <laughs> what it says on that, wow. uh, I can. If I roll for the blink at the end of my turn, I can vanish from my current plane of existence and appear in the ethereal plane. Um, and, and fall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I return to an unoccupied space of my choice that I can see within ten feet of the space I vanished from. Okay. So, I've I've got all of. Um, dragons can cast spells, right? I uh, don't know if this guy can. Let me look. Well, you I should mean, you I mean, get like, access to a sheet. Yeah. So I mean, but uh, since dragons are like spell casters, can I use my spells through him? You do. You're doing polymorph, right? That's what you did. Yeah. No, when you polymorph, you take on the his his attributes and skills, not necessarily yours. Oh, okay. So, uh, how much higher you are? We're 80 feet. So, I'm so going to go ahead and... Uh, let's see. Let me check this. If you were 60, I was right in the top. I'm going to go ahead and... This is the last thing I can do. Uh, I'm commanding you to land! <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Um, what's the save on that? Uh, oh, wisdom. wisdom. Oh, God, he's not that good at that. <laughs> Eight. So, <laughs> you are going to <laughs> land, and I'm going to roll to see if I blink. Okay, so you, you're you blinking after he's going down? Well, I'm still in the I, air because I, I, I have my turn. Yeah, I have the option. Hold on. Yeah. But I don't return. Important to what I can do. Mm. I just want to. I just want to see. Do, do. Do, 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 do. Can did he see what's going on with the dragon and? Uh, yeah, everybody sees this. I mean, yeah, I we can all see this going on. Um, I'm pulling my helmet off and saying, you two, stop it right now. There's enough death and I'll hold up the eggs. Oh, you found the eggs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the <laughs> basket. Oh, okay. Uh, meanwhile, I'm, I'm going to blink up to be standing on the dragon's back when it lands. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> you just became a mount. <laughs> okay. Dragon on dragon action here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 
Okay, so for, for one round, I, I land, right? For, you, for your next turn, you land. That's what you do. Okay. <laughs> All right, Renault's going to also kind of go up next to Quorn and kind of beg him to get these guys to, to stop doing this, that we need to stop and regroup and figure out what the hell's going on. He's getting kind of nervous here. And uh, Beekwoman's continuing to kind of look around here as, as well to see for more signs of any eggs over here. Yeah, I'll pass I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, you guys, yeah, cut your shit out, you know? Yeah, I'll be I angry. They're already done. Like, I don't know what the fuck the argument's about, but just stop. So, Didim, are you, are you carrying the what's left of the egg? Yeah. Did you just leave them, or what was your plan? Yeah. No, no, I carry them out to the equipment and say, I'm really sorry. And Renault will kind of see you walking up there with, with uh, your eggs as well, and he'll approach a little bit, and he's like, well... What about the other basket? Was the other one in there? Uh, I, I looked in both tents. I found the basket in this one in here. Uh, I did have a look in there, but I... Oh, well, that's a good point. I'll go and have a look. <laughs> I'll go and have a look here for the other basket and see if it's cooked to pieces as well. All right, so while he's doing that, anybody else? I know, Usul, you're still sending your bear to track this wolf, and you're going to follow behind him, correct? Yes, and I'd like to uh, whistle, point to Baron, and give him the, hey, follow me type thing, so that uh, I have some backup. <laughs> okay, I'll follow. All right, so I want Baron and whoever else is following them. Uh, everyone will see that Baron kind of walking out of the group. Just go and place yourself like right here for right now, Usul, and Baron. Okay. Okay. Um... Didemar, as you're searching through this uh, tent over here, uh, did you roll your investigation yet? I was just going to ask if um, Beekwood could help, but yeah, I will. Yeah. Then don't, don't even need to roll, because as Beekwood kind of walks out, to, he's kind of following the, the spots of this uh, these tracks over here. You see him reach underneath yeah. this tree over here and then come walking back towards you with another basket in his hand. Oh, you found some ones that might be okay. And you see kind of a, a downtrodden look on his face because as he gets closer, you look in the basket, you can see one of the eggs has been pretty much cracked open, ripped open something, and there's just blood and guts inside it, but the other one still seems to be intact. Okay. I feel pretty bad because I'm an I'm a angel paladin, so uh, yeah, okay. Um, any eggs in this one or they're all cooked? Any what? I'm sorry? Uh, so I found the eggs in the other tent. Is there anything survived in this one under the one as well? Oh, if you no, there's no other eggs in that other tent. Where you're looking at? Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Well, I'll, I'll come out. And as uh, Beekwim c c continues walking up here, he gets back up to Renault again. Still got a pissed off look on his face. He says, "How many more baskets are there?" And Renault will basically share that they only got the two baskets, and there's a total of four eggs that they had. So, yeah. two and two together, looks like you guys were able to salvage one of the four eggs. Mm. And that is where we're going to end tonight. We've reached the four-hour mark, and that's kind of my, that's way, oh. four hours is my limit as to how far we want to go with this, guys. So, we'll pick this back up here in uh, in two weeks. Uh, All right. As well, I know, we, so we've identified that you've saved one egg. Usul and Baron are kind of heading towards the tracks. Most of you guys would have seen at least Baron walk in that direction. So we'll decide how you guys handle that. Let them guys go off on their own in a dark woods with uh, strange things that could be happening to them. Um, is your bear going to pretty much be running away from you? Is he going to stay within a certain feet of you, Usul? Or what's your intention? I didn't ha really have it have an intention. I just want to use him to uh, kind of track the path of uh, that uh, wolf. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really think any further than that. Okay. Um, and oh. yeah, if he goes out there and gets dead, that's fine because it's just a, um, I don't know what that is, but they're kind of, yeah, they just die, so it's no big deal. Okay, one second, guys. I got to whisper something to Usul. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> In the meantime, my mount is going to screech down to the ground, and I'm going to leisurely hop off and hide behind Dinamar. That's messed up. Mm -hmm. Book it. 
I showed you as well, because I'm just like, enough of this craziness right now. We got, like, dead baby eggs here, and Beekwim's crying, probably. I don't know, man. It's a bad situation. As soon as you get that message into your, in your brain, you kind of hear him speaking. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. I last th last yeah. time we had brain messages, Kirio went nuts. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, guys. So, good session. I uh, had fun with that one. I had a big group tonight. Yeah, that, that, That's part of the reason why I didn't have Beacon or Renault do anything, because we had enough people going in there. I wasn't going to add uh, two more people in there. So if we get some other groups, you may yeah, actually yeah, see what they do. Uh, but just out of character, um, you guys uh, you guys don't know what Beacon is, do you? But Bard, Bard, pff, Renault, <laughs> I guess, Corn, you would already know that uh, Renault was a, was a Bard last time you guys met him, correct? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. Maybe carry around his loot or whatever it is he, he plays with, so you'll have an idea of what kind of adventure he is. But uh, I'm not sure anybody really knows what exactly Beacom is all about. I don't think Work really shared with you guys any uh, real good details about what all he can or can't do. I mean, you guys have obviously seen so him he, cast seen some forms of animals, magic, yeah. right? Yeah, he says he's a big say, Didn't ranger. he say he played like a hurdy gurdy? What? I don't remember. <laughs> what? I thought he said that. A hurdy gurdy? Yeah, one of those like really weird looking. Uh... He said Druid Ranger. Yeah. What's that? It's like a messed up looking piano guitar thing. I don't know. What? Oh, for Renault. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Beacom. <laughs> no, no, not Beacom. Yeah, I forgot all about that. But I don't know if it's in his character sheet or not. But yeah, he's got some kind of a weird looking. Uh, or yeah, hurdy gurdy. We'll call it that. He's got a hurdy gurdy. And between now and next session, I'll figure what the hell that is, and we'll play along with that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, that no one else knows how to play. <laughs> oh. oh gosh. All right, guys. Any last uh, questions, comments, complaints? Um. No. Okay. Oh, no. All right, Meriden. Thank you for um, uh, joining us so, tonight. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Um. So yeah, this was my. Uh, third session. I hope that I'm on the the path to doing full blown membership. Right. That makes a thing. Right. I'll have a conversation with the uh, the permanent members, and between uh, okay. now and next uh, next time we have a session, uh, we'll let you know how that goes. Okay. Which hopefully won't be a month away. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I don't think or right now I have any conflicts months? in two weeks, so uh, I I shouldn't have any conflicts, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, and and sorry people because my job today was crazy. So I'm fucking tired. <laughs> um, it, it was noticeable. I like the Game so, of Thrones theme. <laughs> yeah. I can appreciate being fucking tired too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. No worries about it. But no worries. No worries. And I, it, it was very fun. Thank you. All right. I'm going to call it quits, guys. Good night, and we'll hear from you guys in two all weeks, right. all right?